is the Glass Cannon Network. What's up, nerds? Welcome back to Dune here on the Glass Cannon Network. We are playing Modifius's incredible role-playing game, Dune Adventures in the Imperium. Uh, we're not even in the Imperium anymore. This is episode seven, and we are off the charted map in the book. We're playing in, in, a, in a later era where Paul Atreides has taken control of the known universe. And uh, I mean, all bets are off. Where we're going, there is no map, uh, but we're having a good time and we're cackling like mad the entire way. Let me introduce you to my amazing cast. I've got Becca Scott, Skid Mauer, Nora Ibrahim, yes, and Ross Bryan. Let me hear those cackles, ladies and gentlemen. Cackle, cackle, cackle. These mad geniuses. Yes. <laughs> These mad, mad geniuses. Uh, welcome back, guys. Thank you for joining me again uh, for our next uh, chapter here in book two of the Dune Saga that was begun in Inherit the Sand with Troy LaValle as your uh, game master. And I have now taken over for a second book, a second adventure, uh, a continuation of the saga. Um, so my name's Jared Logan, in case anybody didn't know. that That's who I am. And uh, I'm going to ask my players. Uh, you landed on Arrakis last time. You had some fun uh, in the sandy, sandy uh, sandbox of Arrakis. What is your favorite desert getaway? Have you ever gone out to a, like kind of a Ooh. desert vacation? Or is there a part of the world that you like that's quite dry and arid? What about you, Ooh. Ross Bryant? Um, I don't know if you know this, Jared, but I... I b very briefly worked on a cruise ship. Um, That's not deserty. It's not <laughs> deserty. It is, in fact, quite the opposite. It's it's <laughs> extremely aquatical. Yeah. But we did port in Egypt, and um, I, I traveled um, into uh, south of Alexandria to Cairo, and um, that was uh, one of the a, 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 an incredible. Um, and arid experience. <laughs> wow, I shouldn't have gone to Ross first because that feels hard to top. But <laughs> good luck, players. Who can top Ross's pyramid adventure? <laughs> can I top it by saying pharaohs. that I hate desert climates? <laughs> really? <laughs> Absolutely hate it. My parents live in a desert region. It's like it's either hot and windy or it's cold and windy. And I just, I don't in particularly enjoy any of it, so. But they're good for your Do health. Do that information what you'd like. <laughs> Are they? Yeah, good they're for your good health? For yeah. Well, all I, I, all, every if you've got arthritis, it's good. Barber, I've yeah. Never, yeah. That's what I was about to say, what Skid just said, which is that <laughs> people in the olden days, in 19th century, would always be like, I I have the croup. I must go to the desert. Like, yeah, uh, it's like, go to Arizona. <laughs> That's the only advice you would get is like, move to Arizona. Whatever, whatever I, I was thought wrong people with always you. moved to the country. When they were yeah. sick and had the vapors. I gotta yeah. take the air. Yeah. 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 Don't like uh, it. I've been to a cool desert. Which desert? I went to a place called San Pedro de Atacama in Chile. Oh, and very it was cool. the coolest vacation ever. It was wow. many different climates, all very close. There was like salt flats and then a flamingo reserve and beautiful mountains that had like steam geysers and also a bunch of just desert. Um, and, and it was so cool. Uh, also, San Pedro de Atacama is like a bougie tourist town where you can get to all these places really easily. Easily, uh, and then um, the the locals. Uh, there is like a, a big uh, epidemic of opioids, uh, as you know, most places in the U.S. So they got that going for them. Uh, really cool place. Highly I'm recommend. Putting, I'm putting that it's opioid in epidemic in the <laughs> bonus column. Uh, love yeah. a good yeah, salt you know, flat. win in San Pedro de Atacama. So we got wild. Yeah. 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 That is, I believe. <laughs> no, I do not do opioids there. I have to qualify <laughs> that. Um, anyway, this got weird. It's a nice place to visit. <laughs> what about you skid any desert getaways for you i just got back from albuquerque that was pretty fun Ooh, it's beautiful did you do uh, meow wolf no no i was just sat around watching youtube with my dad 
Uh, but uh, <laughs> is that where your dad I, lives? You can watch YouTube yeah. videos about Meow Wolf. What I is could, that, an opioid? I, I could have if he would have uh, agreed to it. <laughs> uh, I I did also. I want to. I have this bug in my ear. A cab driver uh, gave me. I, I, he 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 made me want to visit Algeria at some point. Uh, he was talking it up and he says, you should visit Algeria. He was from Algeria. He said, you visit Algeria. Like it's very beautiful. And like he was talking about, all, it's like, that sounds great. Uh, hopefully I can get there, uh, in the next 10 years before I'm too infirm to take care of myself. Right. <laughs> well, look, your dad's out in Albuquerque and he's doing great. I mean, uh, it's true. Not- <laughs> yeah. That was and the was, most Bugs Bunny answer, by the way. You were like, yeah. I just got back from Albuquerque. Yeah, Albuquerque. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, right after you were done sawing Florida off the bottom of the country. <laughs> well, well let's, that is turn. close to, to White Sands, which is the one, maybe the, the after, after Egypt, the second wildest desert, because it is just White Sands. Yeah. And, oh. and, and Boys to Men shot a music video there. So, oh. well, right. All kinds of great reasons. Was that water to visit that runs desert. dry? Yes, that, it is. Was- <laughs> <laughs> I was right. like, wait. Hold on. These are all <laughs> things you can watch with your dad next time you visit Albuquerque. That's kid. Right. Yeah. <laughs> this is a, I keep an eye this out. These are all amazing ideas. Keep an eye out in today's adventure for some boys to men inspired characters singing a little <laughs> acapella. Just kidding. I'm yeah. not going to go that far. Um, guys, let's leave the uh, safe environs of Albuquerque for the perilous, <laughs> deadly sins of Arrakis as I go into a slightly too wordy recap. Um, <laughs> in our last uh, session, we uh, we learned that uh, House Houdin, who had become House Tyloris through uh, uh, a combination of guile, treachery, and ingenuity, um, had had their uh, their fiefdom stolen from them, taken from them by the ascension of Muad'Dib, by the ascension of Paul Atreides. When the Atreides came to power on Arrakis, when they developed their spice monopoly, the Harkonnen lands were stolen from them. The Harkonnen house was ground into the dust like the dust of Arrakis. It blew away in the Sirocco and was gone. And so as vassals of the Harkonnen, House Tyloris was also um, deprived of their uh, traditional lands and fiefdoms. Um, the uh, Duchess of House Tyloris, uh, Duchess Delessa, uh, is also a member of the Bene Gesserit. And so she traveled to Wallach 9 to uh, the confines of the Bene Gesserit compound there uh, and uh, perfected her control, her Pranu Bindu control, and her mastery of the other memory and became a reverend mother. Um, her staff, her her allies went with her. Corin as part of the guard there. Uh, Aurelius de Grom as a uh, functionary there. And um, as the Talaxu ambassador, uh, Pharos uh, also uh, joined her there. Uh, and they were there uh, living, living small, not living large, li- li- living in the confines of his humble monastery, uh, sitting there angry about how their lands have been taken from them when they were approached by a former Harkonnen agent, Fenton Quill, uh, that you may remember from the first five episodes of Inherit the Sand. And Fenton Quill offered them a way to get their fiefdom back, a new fiefdom, in fact. A new planet has been discovered whose uh, conditions are exactly like that of Arrakis. Uh, It's only missing one thing to break the spice monopoly of the Atreides clan, and that is it is missing a sandworm, a sandworm. So Fenton Quill offered uh, our our team, our house, the chance to go to Arrakis to somehow figure out how to smuggle a sandworm off of Arrakis into space and to go to this new planet and create a new Arrakis, which will allow the Spacing Guild and the other uh, factions in the universe, such as the Bene Gesserit, access to spice without the control of Paul Atreides. Uh, And so they traveled there. Um, And um, after uh, some close calls in the uh, spaceport, and after uh, discovering a spy uh, named Somaba uh, in the uh, in the in the square there, which uh, by the way, Duchess Delessa uh, tricked and turned into her control. Uh, that spy is now willing, thinks that they're on the same side, and will now inform for her. Um, they visited Mother Lupercal. Mother Lupercal was uh, the uh, Bene Gesserit sister, now Reverend Mother, who uh, raised uh, Corin, our Fremen, played by Nora, 
Ray's, uh, raised Corin, and uh, Corin learned from her that uh, she used to work with a former spice smuggler named Teresa. So our entire party uh, decided to go and talk to this spice smuggler, because if you're thinking of smuggling something off of Arrakis, i.e. a sandworm, it's probably not a bad idea to talk to a smuggler. And so you went to a, 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 um, a junkyard in the spice quarter of Arrakis, and when you arrived there, you saw that the scene was threatening. It was a trait of the scene. There were a bunch of thugs kind of gathered around, uh, you know, waiting for trouble, uh, carrying heavy pipes. And you, confr you confronted Teresa, in fact. And Teresa said she's out of the, the smuggling game and it, you need to get out of her junkyard. And I believe that a complication was rolled or in any case, a roll wasn't made to defuse the situation. And now as we begin today's session, our, uh, our four players, uh, Aurelius, Pharos, Corin, and Delessa, find themselves surrounded by four thugs. You can look in roll 20, you can see that you're in the junkyard, that Teresa stands in a separate zone uh, atop a, a spacecraft's hulk that has been, uh, cr cr you know, uh, left here in the junkyard to kind of rot and rust away. Um, and um, when the scene begins, uh, the, uh, the thugs are closing in on you. Um, because the scene is threatening and because there's a further complication that these guys are ready to attack, um, I'm going to say, you know, roles that have to do with diplomacy or diffu diffusing the situation are currently pretty difficult. Um, maybe uh, two or three difficulty. Um, you have two momentum going in and I have one threat because I spent it to make these thugs uh, lose patience with you and attack. And so uh, let's choose a player to begin their turn. Uh, I'm gonna let you guys go first as per the, uh, you know, classic Dune rules, and let's see, I, I believe that uh, Pharos was the one doing the talking last, mm -hmm. so uh, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna let him kind of start, uh, mm -hmm. Pharos, you were kind of the active person that was trying diplomacy, um, you see these thugs starting to close in, what do you do? So even though Pharos is currently wearing the guise of the, um, of the, uh, uh, Fremen. The Nabe. He yes, was a the Nabe. The Naib of the Siege that we that we encountered years, a decade ago. Uh, Ketef Dulub. Um, yes. <laughs> even though I am wearing that face, um, at heart, I am not a battler. I'm not a scrapper. So even though I, I'm wearing the, the, the face of one, I, I know I'm not that sturdy in a fight. Um, so I think if I'm going to do something, it might be one last ditch effort to try to... Uh, make one of those hard uh, social challenges you just described. <laughs> okay, um, so um, here's what I'm gonna say. Uh, right now it's difficulty three because they are, they've sprung into action. And then on top of that, the scene was already threatening. So uh, it was just a very tense uh, scene. So it's difficulty three. So if you wanna try diplomacy now, you need to get three successes on two d20s um right. which as you can see you're gonna need to either take down the difficulty somehow uh which sometimes you can do using an asset um or you're gonna need to um you're gonna need to figure out how to get extra dice and you can do that by spending uh momentum you can get some extra dice what do you think Ferris? yeah um I, th I think i'm gonna have to uh I mean, I mean i might just have to get lucky none of my uh none of my assets are really apropos to this situation um, so I think I, I'll, I might, maybe we've got two momentum. You've got two yeah. momentum. I don't know that I want to burn it on this. I might just try to, uh, um, f focus on my focuses and, um, see if I can roll under such a one to make this, make this work for me. What is, and what is your, uh, what is your target number? Well, first of all, so you're using communicate, I assume, is that correct? Yeah. And my focus what is, my focus is charm in that. So I, I, I. I can't necessarily be threatening. I think I'm, I'm gonna try to, I'll have to charm my way out of this. Okay. And um, I, uh, I think I will uh, go with um, power um, because I'm trying to uh, display power in such a way that uh, where th these, these um, uh, junkyard urchins who are threatening us see that it is not within their interest to threaten those who could be powerful friends. 
Uh, okay, very huh. good. Um, I, I think that your drive statement goes along with that. So let's go ahead and roll and let's see if we can get under that charm focus. Under that, what is your target number for this? Six. Six is your focus. And then what is your total target number? Uh, my total would be 14. Okay, great. Not bad, not bad. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> okay, well, I got one success. <laughs> one success. Okay, so um, that's clearly not enough. Um, and uh, uh, You can re-roll uh, the one that wasn't a success because hmm. of my advisor skill. There you go. Th this this is an amazing and helpful skill of yours. It is. Um, <laughs> it's, it's like a bard. It's the one thing I can do. <laughs> Great. Let's, let's, let's go for it. Great. Oh, my God. <laughs> the first one I rolled an 18. Obvious failure. But this time I rolled a six. Yes. Which That's is three successes. The focus. Oh, That's oh, three successes. God. Okay, so uh, wait, so Aurelius de, de Grom's advisor power allowed you to reroll more than one die. It allowed you just, to roll just, just the one just that the failed, one, the one that failed, and now and you rolled a six. Which on its so that is three successes. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna rule that. Uh, I'm gonna rule that um, uh, three of the thugs. I'm gonna rule that three of the thugs stop and drop their weapons. What do you say to them, uh, Ferris? Great. Um, I, yeah, and perhaps even on the way here, uh, Aurelius whispers something in, in in the ears of everyone, just just like describe the sort of situation that we're walking into and the social dynamics at play. Um, yeah, so these like, people they they value power above all. They 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 respect it. It's great. Like, show your power. And so yeah, after after um, appealing to uh, Teresa and having these people close in, it's like, um, please, would you wield these weapons at the ones who would. <laughs> better serve you as allies and friends don't you see one of your own as uh i try to make a show of like a uh, um charming bravado in front of them very good um and so um three of them ha are convinced that you are a badass that's not to be trifled with i mean you are a naive of of the fremen uh, and you are talking big and, and puffing out your chest mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they kind of pause one of them however uh, and uh, and it's uh, it's my turn to go unless you want to spend uh, two momentum to uh, keep the initiative uh, one of them however is going to move uh, toward uh, I think uh, I think Pharos yeah and and attack um, <gasps> then I'll so spend those should momentum should we spend them yeah. yes yeah, yeah. you want to keep Let's I think, I think I think maybe the, the the real the real Fremen in the mix should should get involved. Yeah, yeah I think this is where Corin would uh, Corin would uh, do something. So Corin, what would you like to do? Thug Four is uh, moving in. Uh, he hasn't quite. He's like, bah! It's all bravado. We oh, gotta teach people this is our turf. Oh, it's a lesson you want. As she unsheaths her Chris knife. Oh no. <laughs> De lesson? What? Oh, lesson. Oh. She turns. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't really listening. And she does kind of like a show, a quick, uh, for show of like some Chris knife forms and then gets in a, in a, an attack stance and just kind of beckons them towards her. Well, she's in the same zone. Would she like to attack or would she like to attempt some other type of test that uh, that just kind of gets him to f uh, finally back down the last thug? Oh, no, I'm always ready to rumble. And they they it was their choice to not listen to Pharos's words. Uh, so they, now they are hostile. <laughs> well, uh, they did just f listen to Pharos's appeal the second time. Uh, can I jump in and try some diplomacy on the fourth? If you'd like I, to, but I'm ready. I think I think that we I'll have wait. to resolve. Uh, 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 apologies, Delessa. I think we do have to uh, resolve Corin's uh, stabby stab before I can allow someone else to go in your party. Um, because you've, you've kept the initiative by spending those two momentum and we passed it to Corin. So uh, Corin, this is a contest. I'm going to roll for the thug. Okay. And that will give you your difficulty level. And the thug rolled uh, pretty well. Uh, well, not 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 exceptionally well, but um, yeah, that's going to be... I want to make sure I get this right, but I think it's two successes. 
Mm-hmm. Let me see here. And it, yeah, all the t- while while this person's advancing, it's like still trying to keep up this shadow. It's like, yeah, you think you think that you are hard because you do not live in the finery of the Atreides. <laughs> you do not know the winds of the deep desert, Shaihulud sand that carve you to a sharp point. <laughs> I would not. I would not burden my hands with you. I will. I will let. <laughs> I will let Corin deal with this one, and Corin, oh, which is all, all like ma- just macho bravado. He's just like, please deal with this one. <laughs> yeah, Corin, it is two successes. You need two successes to hit the uh, the hit the um the thug right now. Okay. Well, I am using uh, my power and battle. Okay, great. And what is your? Do you, do you have a power statement? I do. I will have what is owed to me. We are getting this mission done. I am not backing down to somebody who's just trying to, you know, puff their chest out. I have a mission. Very good. Um, You may use determination in this role because your drive statement matches. And what's your target number going to be when you add your drive to your battle? Uh, okay, so drive and battle is uh, 16. Ooh, that's a very nice high number it to have is. to roll under. I could use master at arms to turn the Chris knife into a plus two Chris knife. Ooh. Um, that's uh, that's in- interesting. You know, when I you're could've... in a fight, a-, a weapon with a higher quality can really help you, especially against like uh, big name uh, a- antagonists, mm-hmm. because those have a requirement of like you have to hit them so many times. Right. But this uh, but guy doesn't seem like this it. guy's probably just a thug. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know what my determination. You can spend supports. one and you can get an automatic one on a die, which means you would automatically get the two successes you need. Oh. And you all start the game with one determination. So you, I don't believe anybody's spent any in the game yet. So I want to save that Do because we carry I feel like my, any from ten Is years it yonder. Now, you know what? Great question, Becca, but I'm going to say no. Over 10 years, your determination was sapped by the depredations of the Atreides. Ooh. That's how it goes. That makes sense. Is it per scene? Um, or it is, is not. It... You don't get one per scene. You have one that you start the game with, and then if you um, if you uh, do things with your drives, like cross them out and things like that, you can earn more. Okay. I'm going to hold on to it because I feel like a 16 is a good... I feel um, like you got this. Yeah. Let's see. I rolled an eight and a 15. And is the eight, I think the eight is under your um, but, your battle, right? Yes. yes. It meets it, That's yeah. three. So you actually got three successes, so you earn a point of momentum. Yes. You can now, nice. you can now do something with that momentum, but I can tell you that uh, it only, only takes one hit to defeat this thug, so please describe what you do to him. <laughs> I am going to, all of a sudden, she looks, Corin looks as though she's going to lunge forward, but in the blink of an eye, she drops down to the ground in a, uh, squats down and does one quick swoop for the Achilles. Oh, cool. <laughs> the guy falls to his knees screaming, Ah! Ah! She's cut my legs! Ah! And you hear <laughs> Teresa up on top of the uh, Space Hulk nearby go, Quiet, Nors. Uh, he was in need of a lesson. All right. You fought off my men. Now get out. I told you I'm not interested in any any criminal activity. Everything we do here is on the up and up. Uh, well, your man over there is not on the up and up. Oh, he is, in, he is in fact, to belabor the pun, on the down and down. He is, uh, <laughs> he is not doing so well. Quite prostrate. Yes, he's mm. very prostrate. Uh, Teresa does uh, climb down off of the Space Hulk to kind of talk to all of you. Um, she's telling her guards to back off. Uh, but uh, she still seems like her arms are crossed, like she's adamant. She's she, she doesn't want to help you. She's saying, "Get out." He was in need of a lesson. You've given it to him. Now get out. I was Is thinking it our turn to be act. The- um, now we will leave conflict because we're kind of just in a normal scene. So anybody may act whenever they'd like. Delessa, why don't you go ahead and say uh, what you'd like to say? Teresa. We've been looking for you, and we think it is in your best interest to speak with us. I know 
of your mother. Um, I want to do a role either using my other memory. Perhaps there was something from one of um, the sisters that did know of her former friend, Lupercus Mildred Tay, the mother we met last week. Yes. Or um, if not other memory, uh, I, I also could use my mask of power to intimate that I know secrets. But I, I think I think we're going to go like sisterly bond, motherly, sisterly, feminine bond here. And I'm, I'm going to try and appeal to those heartstrings. Hopefully her childhood was not traumatic uh, in terms of her relationship with the, her mother, because I'm really banking on that working. Okay, great. So you're you're talking about, you know, you have a, you, you guys have a, um, a contact in common, uh, Lupercal Mildred Tay, Mother Mother Tay, um, and you're Who's, gonna. I'm kind of assuming that Mother Tay is older than Teresa. Um, yes. Now Teresa is not a Bene Gesserit. She's just a criminal. Uh, but you can still like kind of go, hey, we have a friend in common. She sent us here. Like, you know, uh, let's talk about how much we love her and find common ground. That makes that makes sense to me. Um, so, uh, what, what would you like to use? What, uh, what, um, I'm so glad you asked. Mm -hmm. Uh, and okay. So if I attempt a test where knowledge of past events, even those many generations ago would be beneficial, I scored three automatic successes. So I want to call upon an event in her childhood when, um, she was given a gift of significance to her. And maybe it was a birthday where mother Lupercus was there and just say, um, she spoke of what a delightful child you were. Of how hopeful, such light in your eyes, the trusting nature of one who can tell those who are to be trusted from those who aren't. Um, yes. Uh, so you remember through the other memory of the Bene Gesserit uh, that Teresa has had many, uh, you know, um, connections to the Bene Gesserit, and you remember her uh, childhood birthday, uh, and she's like. <sighs> You witches, <laughs> you know how to pull at the heartstrings the way uh, a maid uh, manipulates a loom. Yes, yes, I owe a lot to Mother Lupercus. It's true. Um, you actually got two more successes than you needed to with that automatic three successes. Um, I want to know nice. if you want to spend any of the momentum to find out more from her right now. Just like with these memories about her and with like delving into her past, you can find out something else possibly by spending uh, a point of momentum. You guys currently have three momentum. Oh, well, you're making it that sound like you have some secret you've hidden in her. Um, <laughs> maybe. So, maybe, yeah. I'm just, maybe I'm just messing with you. <laughs> we need to know about smi spice smuggling on this planet. We need to know about how to find a little baby worm and lead it onto a ship. Like the the hulk of a spacecraft she was just standing upon. So um, I'd like to spend one of these three momentum to ask at least one more question. Ask a question then. I'll, I'll let you spend the momentum. You're down to two and you can ask a question. Um, I'm still wearing my Sibis hood, by the way, which disguises my identity. Makes me just look like a real normie. And oh. um, I, I turn around to my companions and does anyone have any particular question? The wording uh, of how you think we should frame this ask. That's, that's a potential real monkey spa situation. Mm. We're not careful. <laughs> This always stresses me out. Um, well, here is a smuggler who has smuggled spice off of the planet. Someone who no doubt has had experience with the worms when they come to attack uh, his spice farming operations. And perhaps knows where worms are active and perhaps has some deeper knowledge of their life cycle or knows the knows someone who would. Hmm. Astute, indeed. I, I take this in from Pharos and I turn to Teresa. Where might one find a fruitful yet young Shihalud? Ah, uh, uh, Teresa goes, they're all over the desert. It's not hard to find them. All you have to do is make vibrations and they come. And yes, yes, I have seen them. 
And yes, they are terrible. And if you're doing anything that has to do with the worms, I suggest you call it off now. I've seen people, entire, entire vehicles devoured, dragged beneath the sands. They barely had an opportunity to scream. It's so large, but it moves so fast. Uh, and here's what I'm gonna really tell you. You really learn from all of this, uh, my friend, for spending that momentum. She's clearly, she's clearly done what you're trying to do before. She has tried to steal a sandworm. You're sure of it. Huh. Oh, uh, I, I want to hush her. And as I step closer and I take off my hood, um, maybe with my back to her, her thugs. And I say, shh, my child, you are in good company. There are no worms here now. Do not stress yourself. I want to try and seduce her a little bit. Okay. All right. Um, do you want another roll for that? Or you want to just role play for a moment? Yeah, well, we're good. Other people can roll things. Could I? Uh, <laughs> no, just... no, no. You're doing great. I, I'm just saying. You know, maybe, maybe what you will say in this scene will have a lot uh, to do with how she reacts. Uh, Corin, you had a uh, thought. Yeah, yes, because I, I did win that battle. Because I have to fight someone is to know them. When I win a, uh, like a skirmish, um, for we. I gain two points of momentum that we may use to obtain information or create a trait that represents some knowledge or insight that we've gained about our opponent. So can we Ooh. get some information huh. because we've gained that momentum from... Yeah, I think that's momentum that's generated instantly after the roll. So we moved down the road a little bit, but I'm not going to deny you your bonus. I'm just going to say, here's two momentum. It's not going to go in the pool if you don't use it right now, but it's, it's here now. So... You can ask two more questions or, uh, and, and, and by the way, they can be pretty pretty wide open and you can see how I okay. respond, you know? So I'll let Delessa, cause so, and the whole party can use that, right? So Delessa could potentially use those to gain the information that she's asking for? Um, yes, sure, sure. I mean, uh, what else do you wanna know? And I'll tell uh, you. As I step in closer, I whisper to her, what was your mistake? When you attempted to steal a worm. How do you know these things? How do you get inside our heads? Bene Gesserit witch. Very well, I'll tell you for one momentum. <laughs> <laughs> we tried to scoop one right out of the sand using a carry-all that had been modified especially for that task. We were fools. We had studied the structural integrity of the vehicle, uh, the, 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 the strength, the tensillary strength of its grabbing arm. We'd done all the math. It didn't matter. You see, they're not just animals. They're, they're, they're elemental spirits of the desert. Every man but me perished in the sands. I don't Carry recommend trying Got to just it. carry one out of the desert. No, I, I wouldn't recommend that. You have one more momentum from uh, from uh, Corin's to know to fight someone as to know them. If you want to uh, ask another question, just metagame want to give yeah. information that we heard from someone that we should try and ride it onto a ship. Very good. Um, are you going to ask a question about that? Because you could ask a question and that could be your final little momentum spin there. Anybody have one in mind? Uh, considering <clears throat> your mistakes that you feel you made, what would you do differently next time? And would they involve riding the creature into a sh ship? And as a... Uh, uh, associated question with that that's not a whole new question <laughs> right. classic Close player question links. asking this is, yeah, but this if is the answer is yes then <laughs> would you care to answer this four part survey yeah. your experience? <laughs> <laughs> I have a four part question uh, uh, what was the additional uh, addendum to the question how do you do that how do you how do you ride the, the worms even I as a mentat have very little knowledge about these things 
Um, she uh, looks over at Corin and she goes, She might know. The Fremen hold the secrets of riding the worms. And yes, I would say the only way to get a worm in a, into a cargo hold of a ship would be to ride it directly into that ship. And to do that, you'll need a skill that only the Fremen have that they've mastered over generations. I had no Fremen in, in Mwadib's regime is going to teach you that skill. You'll need to go to a siege that's on the outside. A rogue siege. Ooh. I know of only one such place. Siege Alburn. But no one knows exactly where it's located. Do you know, you like, a sick. general direction? No, I don't. I only know that they are uh, opposed uh, in many ways to the prophecies of the Atreides. They believe that there is some other destiny that is not being calculated into the greater weave. Perhaps we are that destiny. I speak too much. I don't know all of the Fremen mumbo jumbo. I just know that the only people that would possibly teach you how to ride a worm are there. Then we must head to the Alburn Siege. Very good. I kind of um, want to spend a moment to ask one more question. Well, you have three. Oh, yeah. Go for it. Oh, but you two. do we're know about. Two. We're down to two, actually. Ah, dang! That's why I was. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you do know about rogue ships, like these hulks of remains of ones here. Who is the captain? It would help us in a covert mission without the praise of Muad'Dib. I. Uh, I don't know. I. I. I I couldn't possibly help you. I, I couldn't possibly pilot. Tickle it out of her. I try to tickle it out of her. You see that she's. You see that you know. No, no spend necessary for that. You were just kind of talking to her. You see that um, she's close to something. She, she. Uh, there's a twinkle in her eye. She maybe she regrets that failed mission from before, uh, but. Uh, you know, your your line of reasoning is sound, uh, Duchess Delessa. Who's going to fly the ship that you get the worm onto? And how are you going to get your hands on a ship? Uh, these are questions that possibly have uh, gone through all of your minds. So um, We need a highliner, too, right, to get to this other planet. Uh, right. Well, uh, that... Uh, that um, Fenton Quill said that they would take they would take care of, but you okay. do need to get uh, the the worm into an orbital transport somehow. Mm -hmm. So um, you can continue to. Uh, Teresa tells you she doesn't know of a captain that will do that, um, but you do know from her describing her previous mission that she knows how to fly some of these vehicles. Um, and in fact, anybody with move hmm. could give it a shot. Especially someone that, like, you know, uh, formerly, say, owned an ornithopter or something like that. <laughs> I, I once owned one. <laughs> yes. I was very Are these proud of it. operational over here, right behind you, Teresa? Uh, she says, uh, no. I just steal in junk now. Useless hunks of steel. And she reaches up and she just pries a panel off of one with her bare hand and tosses it into the dust. Then you won't mind us looking around. Um, and certainly you may. Uh, would you like to look around the junkyard a little bit? Yeah. Very yeah. Are we, are we stealing something? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a simple, it's a very simple little map. Uh, you were in kind of the junkyard main junkyard uh, before, but there are two very large hulks that look like they are uh, more or less intact. Like, uh, they are rusting out there. Uh, well, maybe not rusting since it's dune and there's no moisture, but they are kind of moldering uh, in, the, in, the, in the sand. Mm -hmm. Corroding. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This is why you, we, we have these incredible players. Uh, their <laughs> vocabulary. Um, so, uh, they are corroding out in the sand and... Uh, you, uh, one might say that they're totally busted. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what a vocabulary. Yeah, that's why simple. we also... You bring it Shakespearean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, <laughs> way to go, Mr. SAT. Thing. That's why we bring... We need teens like Ross Bryant to be part of the game. Uh, so Teen they are totally busted. Uh, and there are two large kind of uh, vehicle hulks. Uh, and um, you can ex inspect those if you'd like. I'll follow your lead, Aurelius. Uh, yes, well, I have uh, an avocational knowledge of such things. I, I'll do my best. Uh, you, what am I calling you now? You can just call me Duchess or Delessa. Duchess but Delessa. I did make up a new uh, Reverend oh. Mother name, which is mm -hmm. Pomini, Pomini, named after the moon of our planet. Forgive right. me, Mother Pomini. I should have been using that, uh, that no, name. No, 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 no. Delessa is great. Delessa is great. <laughs> Whatever. Mother like, Pomini uh, gestures and, and lets you take the lead, Aurelius. All right. Thank you. Uh, Milady, is Milady a, a sufficient honorific for your new mm. status? My slight nod tells you it is. Okay. Yes, my lady. So, yeah, I will... Aurelius will move over to the spacecraft Hulk and start checking it out. And he's going to Mind Palace. He's going to use his Mind Palace abilities to think back to all of his Ornithopter magazines uh, <laughs> to uh, get the better sense of what uh, might work for us and what might not. Very good. Um, so... Uh, he needs to make some kind of roll to kind of see if this thing is serviceable. Um, and because he's using Mind Palace, I'll make it a, I'll make it a difficulty zero roll as he just sort of takes his time to inspect this thing. Uh, and we'll see what he finds out. Sweet. So I will use, I guess, move. Does that apply here? Move. Uh, yeah, you can use move. Yes, because okay. it is a thing that moves. It moves you into space. Great, and I don't have a focus that would apply, but, and then, then I will use, oh boy. Uh, so, okay, so when you're when you're choosing a drive, do you, you have to choose a drive that has an applicable statement? Is that The other thing that you can do sometimes is you can just choose one of your drives that does not have a statement. If you're, especially for an action like this, which is sort of, um, what we call boot leather, you know, you're just kind of like uh, inspecting something. It's not like a make or break moment for you. Yeah. Uh, you might just choose a drive that has no statement. Okay. Isn't I... there an option, sorry, just game rules wise about um, choosing a statement and then doing the opposite of your statement and that gaining you determination, but then you're going to have to come up with a new statement? That's correct. You You have to either regain the statement later or come up with a new statement change the drive somewhere and that's how you earn determination um so uh this might not be the role where you try that or maybe it is maybe you want to like really uh, he gets really intense about inspecting this spacecraft yeah oh, your head yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well i think since it's like we're really basically just taking a chance on generating momentum here rather than just make a make a break like will we be able to do this or not so i think i will I'll do move, and then I I think I'll take. Uh, well, actually, okay. I mm, God, this this stresses me out so much. I'm sorry. This is the uh, most <laughs> low Im impact roll <laughs> this is just, you could possibly. The stakes could not be lower right now. This is this is a guy walking around a, a car that he found on Craigslist, like. <laughs> Let's it see. Is. Still, um, There's like two thinking. doors into the body of this spacecraft, and you're just standing trying to decide which one. You can clearly say they both go to the same room, but mm. like can't pick. Yeah. I, and like I have this eidetic memory of like a whole volume of Hot Rod magazine that I'm drawing on. Um, so, okay. So I am going to use, I'm going to use uh, power by hook or by crook is my statement. So it's just like any any way I have to do this, I'll do it. So my total is uh, 12. My target number is 12. I got one success. Okay, great. Well, because it was difficulty zero, it still owed, uh, earns you one momentum. So for your one success, uh, I, will, I will tell you uh, flat out that this thing could fly again, but it would need parts that are not in it right now. Um, Teresa has clearly sold off some of the uh, crucial uh, engine components uh, and uh, grav uh, manipulators that get this thing into space. 
So you would need to find a place, say a spaceport or something like that, where you could get your hands on the parts that you need to repair. Yes, Watto's yeah. junkyard would work perfectly. <laughs> okay. Uh, unfortunately, that's on Tatooine, a right. very similar place. All we so, have to do uh, is find transportation to another franchise. And we're going yes, <laughs> you have to journey into the multiverse. That's right. um, no, so uh, so yes, uh, it, it is it is mostly intact. Uh, it's corroded, but not eaten through. You just need to find like a grav uh, manipulator and uh, some of the engine components that are necessary to get it off the ground. Um, and those are, by the way, big pieces. Okay, uh, they're not um, like things you can stick in your pocket. Okay, you I'm have a, a, a. But if we're riding a worm, and we we could fit them on the back of a worm, maybe. Maybe. No, yeah, it's a oh, joke. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, that's why I said maybe uh, worm with, a tone, <laughs> worm with a tone that tells you probably not. Yeah. Um, so you have a point of momentum hanging out there, Skid. You can just uh, throw it into the group pool or you can uh, use it to ask a question about this and get more information. I will. I'll, I'll, I'll use the momentum mm -hmm. to say if either I know or I have an opportunity to ask someone where might be a likely place where we could acquire such things. So uh, the, these are the only space, yeah, you've spent the momentum and I can tell you, these are the only spacecraft that are not at the spaceport here in Arakeen. Uh, perhaps okay. in a city hundreds of miles away here uh, on Arrakis, you could find another spaceport, but uh, the spaceport has hangars. In the hangars, spacecraft are repaired and uh, given maintenance. So it's even likely that there would be parts accessible in the hangar of the spaceport uh, nearby, the Arakeen spaceport. Of course, that was where you met those Fremen guards that are working for the Atreides regime. Uh, the place is heavily patrolled. Uh-oh, potential conflict. What'll happen? Role-playing games are supposed to be easy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, if we're circling up... I, I might, yeah. I'd, I'd like to huddle and say... Mm. Perhaps we should move on from this place. I do have a pilgrim in the square who's offered to give me information. I could always check in and see what he knows. Yes, yes, my lady. The locals would be a better source of uh, intelligence. That is always I'm... wise, my lady. Mm. Also, if, if to use one of these old hulks, we should have to partially rebuild it with parts to be found at the... Uh, at the port, and perhaps a... I would be curious as to who is actively operating smuggling at this moment with ships mm. that are already fitted for use. Agreed. Perhaps they'd also be at the port. It's possible. Any um, other stops we might want to make? I am... Um, I'll just throw this out here. We can take it or leave it. But we, we, we talked about changing assets in that decade of time. Yes. And I, I don't remind, I, mean, I may not have specified this last time, but my assets as they were last time were a courtesan. We, we stayed at their, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, at their mm -hmm. place. We did. Um, very useful. Very useful. Blast. Still, still there. Uh, a flip dart. Dip, still got it. Um, and I think I, sw I will swap out my, my third and select former agent um, because we described Pharos as being a, something of a spy mm. in the old uh, Houdan regime, and I th and that and and the the the, the personnel of uh, House Houdan and Tyloris main, maintained a presence here, and before they were shipped off with the Harkonnens, and I'm sure some remain behind, and there may be someone like that still in Arakeen that we could talk to about this kind of thing also. Uh, very good. So you have a, an agent out there somewhere. Um, you just have to track them down. You have the idea to go to the spaceport and kind of look around for parts or maybe someone who's slipping bribes to the guards and uh, staff of the spaceport in order to get uh, sm smuggling done. And you also uh, have the lead of the Siege, uh, Siege Alburn, the only place that would possibly teach a ragtag group of rogues like yourselves how to uh, actually ride one of the maker worms. Yes. Um, 
So I ask you, uh, and you you may also split your party. It's we're not playing uh, fantasy D twenty, uh, you know, uh, dungeon crawl. So splitting the party is not as 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 dangerous as it might be in some of those other games. Um, let me know uh, who would like to go where. Oh, I'd like hmm. to go to the siege all together, but maybe we split up for information before that. Yeah, so the only problem with the siege is you don't know where it is right now, and you would need to make yeah. some excellent mm. rolls to find it, or you yeah. would need some sort of source of information somewhere in Arakeen that could tell you where it's at. Teresa did not know where it is located. I I mean, I could try to go to that former agent, or honestly, that, that courtesan contact, if they're still in the, st- still out here, um, because all sorts, they're sponges for information. Um, perhaps some some loose words and, and rumors about uh, about uh, um, Siege Alburn were mentioned in their presence. Hmm. I'll I'll take off on my own to find my new friend Samaba because uh, uh, more more scenes equals more roles, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, in fact, let's deal with that first. So uh, I'll go back to just our Arakeen map here. Um, and uh, we'll, uh, we, we can see that there's the Arakeen has a spaceport government offices, your opera house, which is now dilapidated the slum quarter and the square, the square, uh, is a massive area, uh, located beneath the enormous, uh, Atreides compound that now blots out even the son of Arrakis and, and casts a dark shadow over the entire square. And here people uh, come, uh, pilgrims come to uh, pay their respects to Ma- Muad'Dib, to pay their respects to the new emperor of the known universe. Uh, they stand outside of his compound wailing and crying and offering up gifts. Uh, but there are ad- other people, there are water sellers here in the square. Uh, selling, you know, little tubules of water uh, to those that need them. There are all kinds of um, merchants, uh, and you actually find your friend Somaba uh, in a corner, and he appears to be arguing with two other men. Uh, I have uh, redawned my Sibus hood in this place. Yeah, um, mm. he he is he is uh, actually. Uh, arguing with two men and they are they are uh, playing chess. Two of them are playing chess and Somaba is near them and all three of them are arguing. They 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 uh, they are also uh, they don't look like they're like angry at each other, but they are kind of interrupting each other and uh, and kind of arguing. Um, so uh, Somaba is there. He's got you know he's heavily covered in uh, in in cloth, uh, you know, almost head to toe. Um, his dark face and and very bright eyes shine out. From within that, uh, and uh, his two friends are dressed like uh, pilgrims, like he is. Only one of them is clearly uh, a Fremen. Could I say that I'm lurking in the shadows, like so that Delessa could approach alone, and they don't know that she's with anybody? I think that that's absolutely no problem, and I'm even going to let you do that without a roll right now. I'm going to let you just kind of lurk back in the shadows. Um, uh, this is a very, you know what, let's give this scene a trait. It's crowded, um, and that's what allows you to do that. Okay, cool. um, it's very crowded here. You can use that to your advantage, or it might come to your disadvantage, depending on what happens in the scene. And so, Mother Pomini, uh, also known as a Duchess D'Alessa, uh, what would you like to say to Samaba? Uh, uh, perhaps I could help. What is the argument here? Ah, we are talking about... Uh, uh, the prescience uh, granted by the spice, uh, uh, does it in fact have a quantum effect on the universe itself? Does knowledge of the future create the future? Or is the prescience granted by uh, certain types of spice usage actually a, a type of c- quantum tunneling perception that sees a structure in the underlying universe that is already there? I maintain that it is a perception but Lot here believes that it is uh, a force that acts upon the universe. I think what you're asking is uh, the universe deterministic. Do we have free will or is there one set course that you could see into the future of? There's two paths to choose and it doesn't matter what you say because it doesn't change the outcome of whether or not the universe is deterministic or not. No matter what we believe. Anyway, Samaba. 
<laughs> um, they kind of sit in, uh, they're kind of like pondering what you just said. Uh, as they play chess, they're, one of them is holding his chess piece. But Samaba. Uh, 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 you have checkmate in three moves. Oh, wow. Do you want to roll understand to see if you actually are able to impress them that much? Hell That's yeah. Great. And I will yeah. not be spending anything on it. Um, you know what? You need, a, you need a one success to be that impressive here. All right. Let's say truth and understand. This is a okay, 10. Great. Classic. I got two sixes. They both oh, succeed. Oh, wow. Nice. That's amazing. Nice. Um, so you do impress them. You generate uh, one momentum. Uh, so now you're back up to three. And uh, you, uh, I mean, I don't know what you would spend it on here, but if you have, you know, remember momentum can be spent on any kind of little narrative trick. So if you want something to happen here, spend it. If not, throw it into the group pool. And Sumaba is ready to uh, come apart with you and, and talk to you. He thinks that you're uh, a spy on his side and he is possibly, you're not sure, a spy for the Atreides here on the ground level of Arakeen. Uh, I bank the momentum and pull him to the side, uh, scanning the edges of the crowd briefly to just see if I spot Corrin, but don't do anything if I do. You don't spot Corrin because that's how good Corrin is at hiding. Ooh, <laughs> love that. Nice. Unless Corin wants to say everything's okay. Um, I walk with him, do the old walk and talk. Somehow Should we be seen together? In this crowded place, I'm sure a few minutes can be stolen. Thank you for meeting me here, my new friend. Of course. You have information that I can act upon? Or do you need something from me? I have no information for you at this time, although there were a few thugs in the junkyard that don't seem to respect Usul as they should. Ah, uh, Teresa's gang, yes, we're well aware of them. We don't feel that they pose a threat to our patron. Speaking of threats, there was also talk of a siege full of those who cannot be trusted. A rogue siege. That's right. I lower my tone and lean in even closer. This is indeed an interesting uh, prospect. Are you aware You're of any such- talking about a group of Fremen who have not fallen under the banner of the Atreides. Disgraceful on their part. I spit on the ground. <laughs> what? <laughs> Very dangerous indeed. Very dangerous. Fremen trade ideas like viruses. I just remembered how uh, powerful the gesture of spitting can be. Yeah, uh, yeah <laughs> and I did it. What? Your water? Like, oh. no, he's not, you want he's, not, he's not Fremen, so don't Sorry. worry. Zalaba is not Fremen. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you love me? Ma'am. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh, uh, I'm flattered. Uh, the crowd gathers. Guys, guys, something big's happening. <laughs> uh, no. Um... um so he's Indeed. saying, wow, if there is a siege that like that, that would be very dangerous. Um, he says, uh, there are so many sieges and each is as different uh, as uh, factions on uh, your own uh, home planet. Um, they are not, uh, even though the Fremen uh, give the appearance of unity, they are not one unified whole. Not all have seen the true path, the true path of the Atreides. Well, surely such rogues must be brought to an understanding or dealt with. Wouldn't you agree? And if so, how do we find and convert these misguided Fremen? Finding them could be quite difficult, but there is someone who made a geographic survey of all of the sieges on the continent and who, um, well, uh, recorded everything. Liet Kynes. Uh, Kynes was the planetographer uh, and the judge of change uh, at the time when uh, our emperor came to power. But of course. He passed away in sacrifice for the Atreides long ago, but he has, he has his former offices which have been converted to an archive here. Uh, the Kynes Archive. Hmm. It could be that in his studies he came across these these rogue Fremen uh, and he may have left behind some clue as to their whereabouts. Of course. The Kynes Archive. 
Would that be in the government offices where we first met, or some other location? Yes. Yes, in the government offices. I can give you exact directions, and I do. Oh. <laughs> uh, 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 and, um... I wonder if there's, like, a pass. Do I see any insignia on his clothing? Oh, no. Uh, this guy's a deep cover uh, okay. spy uh, whose job, it, it seems not to even be, like is to an watch Arrakis what's flag? going on. on uh, no, no, he would not wear uh, the, the like the Atreides hawk or anything like that. He doesn't want people to know. Uh, but it, but he keeps reiterating that if there, he agrees with you. If there's a Fremen siege that is not um, part of, you know, the, the unity of, of helping in Muad'Dib's uh, jihad, then they must be brought to heel. So Mava, your loyalty is profound and I am deeply honored for your friendship. And I give him a, a bow. Is there anything else, any knowledge you've acquired that would be of use? Hmm. <sighs> Unfortunately, the life of a spy has become quite dull. Mm. Uh, the Atreides uh, have crushed all spice smuggling uh, throughout the city. Uh, it's an impossible task now to get any spice off of the planet without their notice. Um, the, yes. uh, you've met one of the former smugglers and you see that she is not what she once was. <laughs> Laughable indeed, yes. Anyone but I do? keep a, an ear open for uh, even the slightest inkling of rebellion. And I will let you and my masters know if I hear it. Much appreciated. And since, of course, our alliance is a bit rogue itself, uh, our sharing can be mutual, for I don't know whether my status is higher than yours or... Well, given my status, it probably is. <laughs> I understand. But here in the field, <laughs> rank means little. Am I right? I must go. No, I must go. <laughs> All right, we must I covertly go. look around also. <laughs> um, and when and he now, glances away, I'm gone. <laughs> and now he uh, he's going he has sharp eyes and um, I would like for Corin to let me know what role Corin is using to be um, unseen. Uh, well, her move uh, focus is in stealth. Oh, there you go. Uh, would Jubba Cloak help me out in being stealthy? Yeah, in this crowded place, yes. Um, and so, I would also use uh, probably duty. What must be done must be done. Um, right. I, I would like to have been, as I'm keeping a close eye on the Duchess uh, for her safety, I wanted to also be eavesdropping on, because this is a crowded area, eavesdropping mm -hmm. on conversations and okay. picking up on any information that might be useful. Uh, very good. Um, well, uh, first, the, the first thing I want you to do is to make that that sort of unobtrusiveness roll. Um, would you please make that stealth roll? Because that's going to be the what contests his ability to notice you. Okay. And it's going to be difficulty one. Crowded helps you. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, actually make it a difficulty zero, Nora, uh, because... Uh, the crowdedness helps you. The trait in the scene helps you. So, okay. uh, and then he's going to have to see if he can beat your um, difficulty okay, so that you set for him. Rolling a twelve combined. Okay, you're rolling under twelve. Here we go. Yeah. I rolled an eight and a thirteen. Great. So you rolled one success, right? Yes. So he only needs to get one success to notice you, and so Samaba. Uh, he no fool, Samaba, a true spy for the Atreides, rolls his dice. Did he see Corin as she slunk into the shadows? Maybe we'll find out when we come back from our break. <laughs> We're gonna take a brief break, uh, and we'll be right back with more intrigue on Arrakis. This is Dune, inherit the sand on the Glass Cannon Network. See you in a minute. We're back in a dusty square in Arakeen where uh, a crowd moves, jostles each other for position uh, to, to, to lay down 
uh, before the massive Atreides complex that dwarfs every building in the area. Uh, ornithopters take off from it, and below in the shadow of it are the people, the water sellers, the merchants, uh, the people playing chess and arguing philosophy. Um, and uh, we return to our scene. Uh, did Samaba, the spy for the Atreides, notice Corin? Well, I'm not going to tell you that. I'm going to just uh, move on, and you guys can just <laughs> worry about whether uh, he saw Corin or not. What? Uh, but I can tell you that um, a lot. Uh, you said you were uh, keeping an ear open for things people say on the street, Corin. Yeah, I, I want the tea. You, I want the hot goss. What's going uh, on? I can tell you that people generally seem a little bit afraid of the Atreides, and uh, one of the things that lets you know this is there's a water seller, and he's like, bah. Business is horrible with these pilgrims. They bring their own water supply from their home world. And you do see people going by with like big catch pockets and like tubes leading up to their mouth. Uh, and after he says that, his his friend uh, says to him, Quiet. You don't want the regime to hear you speaking that they've hurt your business. Shh. Keep it to yourself. So um, that's the kind of scuttlebutt you're hearing in the square of Eric Keen. Uh, and that, I think, does end that scene. You have uh, you have information to work on, uh, Mother Pomony, uh, nay, Delessa. Uh, and so I will ask Aurelius uh, or, and or Pharos if they have some place that they would like to visit while uh, the two ladies uh, visited the square. Should we scope out the hangars at the starport to see if we can spot a weakness see if they have if they're somewhere we with that has the parts that we need and if there's a way to get them sure very good um so let's go to the spaceport um and um uh the spaceport um is uh uh, it's right part of Arakeen. It's a, it's a little bit on the outskirts, but the city kind of uh, meanders up to it. Um, and uh, uh, you uh, remember, because you were here maybe a day ago, uh, how it's sort of laid out. And if you look in Roll20, I've laid it out for you. Uh, basically, <laughs> the city of Arakeen uh, is uh, separated from the spaceport by a huge security cordon uh, that is operated by these fanatical Fremen guards. Um, that you uh, you interacted with earlier. So fanatical, in fact, that Pharos was able to use their own religion against them in uh, deceiving them about his identity. Um, beyond that security perimeter, there is the port uh, where, uh, you know, uh, basically where people come in, they engage in customs, the, they um, get their uh, various cargoes off of their ships uh, and move them uh, into the city. Um, and uh, from the port, you can go to um, uh, the hangars that I mentioned earlier, where uh, StarCraft are repaired. Uh, they are, and when I say StarCraft, I want to make clear, we're talking about orbital transports, because in the Dune universe, all faster than light travel is done by Hayliner, giant, massive, many miles long ships that are operated only. They are the sole purview of the Spacing Guild. Uh, and they exist way up in orbit and don't really land on the planet. Um, but uh, the ships that you would have here in a spaceport are orbital transports. Um, so uh, there are hangars that the orbital transports can uh, be uh, docked in and where they can receive maintenance or <laughs> upgrades. And there's also landing zones where, I mean, the ships touch down. Uh, and then they might not even go into a hangar. They might take off uh, hours later or, or, or something like that. Uh, and then there is a, uh, a large um, complex uh, attached to the entire spaceport, and that's the Communinet Hub. Uh, and the Communinet Hub is their version of uh, air traffic control. Um, this is a very important part of the entire process for landing here. Um, even though in the Dune universe they do not have um, computers, they do have uh, radios of sorts. Uh, and so um, they uh, keep in contact with the, the ships in space and uh, that are landing, uh, and they give permission to launch uh, to the various ships that come through this hangar, position to, uh, 
permission to launch, per permission to land. Um, and uh, this is all done in sort of an old, almost almost analog radio kind of a technology. Um, so, um, I ask Theros and Aurelius what they would like to investigate and how they would like to investigate it. I think we have to get past security, though, before we can do anything, right? Well, uh, look, is that I fair? I That's did create true. a trait in those security guards, assuming it's the same ones as we passed through the first time. Oh, um, that's true. Which is the trait of trusting. Um, ah, okay. But the traits generally, uh, they kind of go away at the end of a scene, don't okay. they? Um, um, so we got was, that. But I, I also want to be clear of our goal. Like, are we scoping this out in order to find a place to get the parts that we'd need to repair one of those junked ships? Are we looking to find a whole ship? Are we looking to get a pilot? Um, yeah, I guess none of us can really pilot one of these things. So. Well, I, as, as one of us has ornithopter experience, and I'd really love it <laughs> if you stopped down playing that because I value you and see your skill. And I really... <laughs> I really would love you to celebrate that about yourself, Aurelius. And, uh, <laughs> That's so sweet. I wish I could talk to myself the way that you talk to me sometimes. Aww. Yeah. Aww. So often uh, Aurelius is talking be. and I'm like, hey, don't talk about my friend like that. Right. Uh, <laughs> even thanks, though the man. technology <laughs> is not computerized. You said it, all it, these words unironically. Uh, I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, even though the technology is not computerized, it is sufficiently advanced because we're so many thousands of years in the future that if someone with a decent move score can probably figure it out. The difficulty might be higher than, you know, using a bicycle or a ground car, but uh, it's possible that any of you could take a stab mm -hmm. at it. Well, here's you the thing. So I am an avid flight sim player. I love my, the new Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I've deluded myself to the point where I feel like if it's an air, 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 airplane movie situation where the pilot gets sick, I can jump into the cockpit and land uh, an Airbus. Sure. And I'm not even a Mentat. So I figured that See? a Mentat would do enough, would have enough knowledge that they could at least give it a good shot. I think that you're probably right. Especially a Mentat that's been uh, voraciously memorizing flight magazines. Yes, exactly. And thank you for tacitly agreeing with me that I, Skid, could land an airliner if I had to. Uh, so, well, well. <laughs> uh, so I think we could steal a transport, I guess. Now, that is, that is a wild idea. Ooh, and, but, uh, um, yeah. Uh, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, everybody's everybody. You know, if you're listening instead of watching, everybody's gulping. Their uh -huh. their throats everyone's, are moving like. Ooh. Yeah, or Adam's apples are bobbing Ooh. up and down. I'm really tugging at my collar, and steam is coming out. Um, but yeah, gotta get this. Gotta get this dang worm <laughs> off off of the planet. Some of how. Okay, um, this might be an easier way to to go about this. We could. Uh, don't, aren't there like like anti grav like uh, hauling transports in Dune? Absolutely. So you're talking about suspensors. Yeah, um, but like, but like a flatbeds, like big like flatbed things. Oh, well, ground cars, which also run on suspensor technology. They are sort right. of uh, anti grav kind of like floating vehicles that stay close to the ground. Okay, because I was thinking what an alternative thing is we could secure something like that, load up, find the parts we need, load them up onto there, and then somehow get them out of the, out of the, uh, out of the starport. A little gear heist. A little gear heist. The okay. Lufthansa heist. But all right. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to find a ground car. Yep. Um, well, Let's do it. <laughs> while, while this conversation is taking place, Aurelius and Ferros are planning a part heist that I'm sorry, just to walk through the flow chart of this in my brain, are going to steal spaceship parts from the spaceport, transport them via ground car across Arakeen to the junkyard, where we can then repair the junk spacecraft 
to then take that to Siege Alburn, learn the secrets of worm riding, and then ride one of those sweet, sweet segmented bad boys up into said repaired spaceship. Sounds this a lot easier to just steal this ship. <laughs> yeah, but I, I picture like you doing that, and then there's like a scene where you're like, skrrr, and you pick up me and Delessa, and you're like, get in the car. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd you get that? Don't ask. <laughs> don't ask. No time time. Later. Where'd you get um, the sunglasses? Don't ask that either. Mm-hmm. Are you ready to? <laughs> are you ready to take these parks now? Are you ready to dive in, or are you? Do it. Doing it's more a lot intelligence more dice. Work. You have to roll well. It, to, to, perhaps, to all perhaps all. some some. I feel like there's gather information rolls. Yes, yeah, certainly. Yeah. There's also For, create asset rolls, and a ground car would be an asset. So yeah. in this to system, me, it's not quite as difficult. I'm not going to make you roll five times to steal a ground car. Like, you know, tell me kind of how you're acquiring it, right. and and then roll to see if you're able to acquire it to create the asset. All right. Yeah, it seems to me we've got two. We've got two prongs. One of one is going to these archives to finding to find the location of 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 the rogue siege, and the other is getting the parts we need to actually get there and get get ourselves gone with the with the loot. Um, so yeah, let's try to create this dang ground car and case the joints to see if we can figure out the the comings and goings so that we can actually pull off a successful awesome robbery. Love Who's it. gonna create the ground car asset? You are. I'll do it. Mind. <laughs> okay. Um, and, wait, uh, I will do it. Uh, okay. Very good. Um, I'm trying to think if this scene has any traits before we start rolling, uh, and uh, I'm gonna. I, I am gonna give it the trait of bustling. Um, it's not necessarily crowded, but everybody is very intent on their business. Um, so that could be used to your advantage, but it also might increase the difficulty in certain situations. So, um, and just kind of tell me uh, how you're creating this asset, how you are getting your hands on a ground car and do that in, by also explaining which skill and drive you're using. Great. Um, you have, by the way, we're in a new scene, two momentum. And I still only have one threat. Guys, I'm not a threat to you. Go ahead and give me threat for extra dice. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, Do it. <laughs> I think I think this is this plan, we going to have to. So, mm-hmm. um, all right. I think, I mean, Pharos is a, is a wheeler and a dealer, a wheedler and a charmer. And I think these are the, the methods that he will attempt to use to get access to one of these vehicles. So... The skill I would use would be communicate, again, with that focus of charm. Um, mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. Yes. And I'm going to go ahead and... Mm, I'll use truth with that belief as a lever statement, because I'm really trying to... I'm trying to, I, I suppose, unless I'm... We haven't really discussed how I'm getting it yet, but if this is a fraudulent <laughs> uh, um, acquisition, then I'd be using truth. If I'm just trying to... Right, like, you're lying to them. You're kind yeah. of promising... Yeah. You're, I mean, perhaps you're promising money that you don't have, you know? Right. Um, you're getting them to take, give you this thing as, as kind of a, a, on credit or a rental, and I think you're probably haggling with someone, you know, uh, a little ways into the city. You're not right on top of the spaceport haggling for a ground car. Great. Uh, but um, you have to create the asset now, um, and I'm gonna allow all the things you just said apply, but creating an asset is a difficulty to task. Okay. Um, so oh, is there okay. any asset you can use to get that difficulty down and make it easier for you? Or would you like to spend one of your two momentum to gain extra dice? I, uh, um. Do the dice. I'll, I'll yeah, I'll, I'll use the momentum and, and okay. dice. Okay, so you're you're talking to this Fremen who has a ground car. Uh, right. he, he well, he's probably not a true Fremen. He's probably more like uh, Corin in that he's a Fremen that became cityfied at some point, and he's haggling really hard with you. And he, he's charmed by you. He likes he likes talking with a, a naive such as yourself. Uh, mm-hmm. He wasn't familiar with the guy you're impersonating, um, so he has that in common with you. So he wants to make a deal with you, but he's. He's kind of like, I can't believe that you're going to pay me later. What are you talking about? And so um, you've spent a momentum to get an extra die 
roll your three dice. You need two successes, but you uh, you do have a, a focus that applies here, so That's right. this could work. I got to roll under a 13. Oh, oh. Well, my first roll is a two, so that's okay. That's immediately that's good. So that's two successes right there. That's right. My next roll is a four, so that's four successes Boom. right four there. Four successes. You Boom. only needed two. You've generated two momentum. And my next roll is a ten, so that's five total. Oh my wow. gosh! Great. Um, five. Yes. You've generated. You've generated. Well, mm-hmm. you have four momentum right now. Is what I, I have. Right, and I'm like, um, please, my friend, my water is yours. At the time. This uh, under under the the new regime. This is how things work. The promises of the future always come to pass under the clear eyes of the Atreides. They see what will happen, and by seeing it, they bring it to fruition. So too does Ketef Delub bring to fruition what he promises to you. <laughs> um, good lord! I mean, he's bowled over. Uh, he he hands you the control box that operates the car. Uh, and you now have a large flatbed ground car that you can uh, manipulate. Please add ground car to your list of assets. <laughs> Hell yeah. Nice. So you that the first part was easy enough and you generated a lot of momentum for yourself. Um, so now you go and pick up Aurelius de Grom, I'm assuming. Uh-huh. Uh, you were just like, yeah. get in. <laughs> <laughs> so now there are vehicles moving in and out of the port. Uh, they do have to go through the security cordon. Um, how do you plan on getting past that? I okay. suggest. I have a suggestion. Uh, so I had a an asset in the last phase of the game. I had a a uh, a spy. I had a spy. So I'm thinking of the Lufthansa heist and it's how did the gangsters get into the, the the secured terminal to lift all the jewels and money they had a guy on the inside they had a, they knew the security guy just let them in so maybe i trade that in for a secu- for someone working the gate at security at at the at the hangars so we can just like drive right past um, that was one of your assets that you didn't change in the, in the course of the 10 years? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, oh, actually, no, I, I did change it. Never mind. You did say that you changed it, I did but, change you know it. Who, but you know who didn't, you know who said that they did have a, an agent? Who? I did. Yes. Oh, there you so go. So your was... idea is still doable in, in, in theory. I yes. added that, I added X agent to my sheet, so perhaps this is the same person. The one that yeah. was abandoned uh, by you was someone that I was also also working under the uh, uh, under the mandate of Delessa, um, and I can now attempt to seek that uh, person out for one last job. Cool. Um, and so, um, if you're using an asset, that makes this possible. Um, and I'm going to say that it goes ahead, and uh, you know what? It, it it kind of gets through. There's no need to roll because. What, you've, you're using this asset in a very specific way. You've uh, defined her, it's a her by the way, in a very specific way. And mm-hmm. so the ground car rolls up to the security cordon for the vehicles uh, and um, you hand um, some um, sheets to a small woman. She's short. She's kind of she's kind of stocky, very dark skin. She's in the official space, spaceport Arakeen uniform, and she looks at blank pages you've given her, <laughs> which are your, uh, you know, your uh, qualification, your papers. <laughs> she hands them back to you, and there's a twinkle in her eye as she opens the gate to let you in. Awesome. All right. So now you're into the port, and there are Fremen guards uh, milling about. Uh, but you have access to the hangars, the Communinet hub, and the landing zones. Uh, where are you headed? I mean, it would seem if we're trying to get we're trying to get particular parts, which yeah. would all be in these uh, in these hangars, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. That- right. Okay. So, would you like to drive your ground car uh, into the hangars? Yes, yes. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, you, uh, you know, it just it just floats over the ground, making a soft hum as it uh, weaves through the bustling uh, spaceport, uh, and you soon find yourself in the hangars, where there are workmen doing maintenance on a large orbital transport, an orbital tran, and two regular orbital transports, 
Uh, one is so one is exceptionally large, and one is uh, and two are kind of a smaller size, normal size. Um, there's all kinds of parts and and uh, different uh, accoutrement of maintenance men laying about. There's also pilots that are kind of running checks on their uh, various uh, starcraft to see that they're up to snuff to take off soon. So uh, let me know what is the next phase in your little uh, equipment heist here. Hmm. Huh. Do you guys remember Fletch? Uh, the, the movie I, Fletch? I've actually yeah, never seen it. It's been a while, but yeah. Because <laughs> there is, in a, in a movie, that in that movie, there is a scene where he has to go into an airplane hangar and kind of fake his way through a conversation to get information in that case. But I'm thinking, like, if we could do something similar here to load up if we could if we could pull this off like if we could like get these parts and even like have the people who work there load the parts onto the truck yeah, like, for us all right all right new work order we got to get what is this yeah. stuff doing here we got to yeah um yeah very good um well there are maintenance people uh there uh there's at least one uh walking by you right now um pushing another kind of like uh you know a suspenser field uh, that's kind of holding up like a big uh, engine block or some sort of uh, uh, coolant system for like a Starcraft. Um, he's pushing it past you. Um, what would you like to say to him? All right, uh, I th- pretty much what we what we just kind of riffed there, but um, I uh, okay. I might there may be a way of trying to put this more in our favor by using the skills that Pharos possesses and. Um, if perhaps in the intervening time, I can't, um, I can't have donned the face of a more official uh, person that would mm-hmm. make this cover story a little bit more plausible. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. Do we know someone specifically who w- would be an authority figure here? Um, I think we could. I mean, we may have clocked such a person as we walked through. Can I? Can I maybe roll to see how effective or if? I made such a such an effective um, appraisal of the of the hierarchy here at the at the port. Yeah, actually, so- m- maybe their picture might have been posted somewhere. Like if there was an air a starport administrator or something. Like a lot of <laughs> yeah. times, like that. Like, Here's yeah. who's serving your starport today. You know, the, 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 their picture might be displayed yeah, somewhere. Right under the but- Atreides banner, there's like a photocopy of a picture, and it says "Employee of the Month." Right. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Well, this role is going to determine whether you you know you're able to pull off this scam at all. If Ooh, you yeah. pick the per- if you pick the perfect person, then I'd say that this this plan is a cinch to work. All right. Can um, I just I've- say if the supervisor is the one with their photo of the employee of the month, they chose themselves. Is that what That's happened? Right. In, in this in this world, it's always that guy because he insists. <laughs> yeah. Um, you guys checked out the break room, uh, and uh, you ate someone's uh, me- lunch out of the freezer, and then you yeah, we could actually photo. do that. Like yeah. we could yeah. go yeah. into the break room, like back yeah. here, and check out. Yeah. Uh, totally. Let's let's just let's just see if Pharos is able to determine uh, a, a face that will that will make this possible. Um, <clears throat> Great. So Pharos. Uh, what what skill are you going to use? I'm going to. I think this sounds like uh, um, understand it and does. and truth. Um, so uh, deductive reasoning is one of my focuses. Mm-hmm. Um, and so here we go. I have to roll under Beca- a fourteen beca- because you ha- have chosen face dancer. I'm not allowed to give you any additional difficulty uh, <laughs> w- when you make disguise rolls, right? Mm-hmm. So I am going to say that uh, there's no additional difficulty added, although I would if, say, Delessa was trying to suddenly put on a mustache and a hat. Um, <laughs> this would be very difficult, but you can literally change your physical makeup to fit the, this. So it's, so I'm going to say difficulty one. You just need one success. Okay. Uh, you have four momentum. Would you like to spend any of it? This seems pretty damn important. So, yeah, I will give, I will, I will spend a momentum. Okay. That gives you a, a Three dime. dice. Here we go. Okay, that's one success. Nice. And that's all you needed. Um, So you actually uh, see someone moving uh, through the hangar to the Communinet hub, uh, and people seem to be listening to what he says as he kind of barks some orders at them and then moves into the Communinet complex. 
uh, and that's got to be the guy that you've got to uh, mimic. Um, some sort of low, low ranking uh, Atreides authority uh, over the starport. Um, so um, you look exactly like him. And so now the only thing left is to make sure uh, uh, the guy's going to believe you. Okay. You, 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 you aced that role. He, he thinks you are that guy. You're mimicking him exactly. So Great. what are you asking him for? Okay. So, um, I, I need the precise parts that, uh, Aurelius assessed we need. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm asking him for those I was like, look, we need to load these up. Um, how was Aurelius's? Aurelius knew that there were parts missing, but does he know exactly what he needs from this spaceport? I think That's Aurelius, it's time for you to make a roll. You have to tell Pharos exactly what to ask for, and we won't even know if you got the exact right thing uh, until. Well, well, let's see how the roll. Let's see <laughs> okay. how the roll. Uh, the roll comes out. So uh, let's say, uh, w I mean, I think this is clearly understand. Is that right? Yeah, this is definitely understand. Do you have a drive that fits this well? I I mean, yeah, I, I could use. That's mm, this, I just feel so weird about this, like some of these things, because I, I just, some of these drives same is like you could apply them to anything that's important to you. Right. So you know? if, if, if one drive doesn't kind of spark your inspiration, like, wow, that's exactly right for this, then just use one that's kind of low that doesn't have a drive statement. OK, that's what, that's what the book tells you to do. And, and the the. the that there is a penalty to that, right? Usually your drives that have drive statements are your highest drives. Right. So your difficulty is going to be a little a little difficult to match. Okay. To roll uh, under, I, rather. I will go. I used to have a drive statement for duty. I don't anymore since we shifted around. So I will use duty and understand. And I, uh, I don't have a focus that applies. So Great. You are not, yeah, you're not a professional starship mechanic. So right. uh, we'll see how this goes. Um, okay. You need to, here's, here's, here's the part that sucks. You need two parts to make this starship work. So that means you need two successes. Okay. Would you like any, would you like any uh, bonus dice? You could spend one momentum and get a bonus die. If you spend all three of your momentum that you currently have, you could have two dice. I think uh, if it's okay, I think I'm going to spend all three momentum. Or you could give me threat. Would you like to give me some threat for some you know of what? those dice? I will spend w one momentum and two threat. To one get momentum two dice. and two threat. That is perfect. You're spending one momentum. You're giving me two threat. So we're currently at two momentum, three threat, and you. I, I see. Becca, I think it's uh, only one threat. I think that that might. I, I think that I think that it's two, isn't it? You give me two, yeah, and then. If I, Right. It, it's the same go. scale as momentum, I thought. The first one is one, and then the second one is two additional. Um, no, I think it's like, it's all oh, like see. one currency, and it's gotcha. just, yeah, so we need a total of three points. Either gotcha. Three points Fred, total so. for two more dice. I see you. Right, yeah. right. Great. Um, okay. okay, so that'll give me four dice. I have no focus. My target number is 12. I need to, oh boy. Use that mentat mind. It's my Oh man. <laughs> All right, one success. All right, two successes, but one natural 20. Again! Oh, I've never rolled more natural 20s in my life than in this game. And in the game where you don't want to. Yeah, right now, yeah. exactly. where you don't want it. So the complication is this. So how many successes did you get? Did you net? Two. Two, okay, that's what you needed. So they're loading these enormous pieces you know, one is one is sort of like a, a suspensor generator that kind of helps with like lift off. The other is like a core engine component. Uh, they're loading this like core engine component onto uh, your your ground car, and that's when the Fremen guards uh, take note of you oh, and no. start moving towards you. They're in the hangar with you. Let's put them in there, shall we? Mm. Uh, and. Yep. Uh, they approach you in the hangar, and they're like, uh, uh, "What is this car? You're moving. Uh, you're moving uh, the this material off site." You, you're asking me questions that are above my pay grade. You know, I I do what the what 
I do what they tell me to do. They do what the person above them is telling me. You know how it is. Mine is not to question why. Mine is to get these parts out of here. Um, the uh, Fremen uh, guard looks at the... This is uh, a suspenser <clears throat> cluster. I mean, uh, this is a very uh, expensive item. This okay. guy apparently knows about starships. All the more reason to have it in uh, in uh, our hands. <laughs> Trust me, my <laughs> friend here is very sturdy. Good security, this one, as I'm patting uh, Aurelius on the back. Um, yes, very good security. Please roll something to lie right now, because... Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> and that's going to be versus... We're going to do a contest, and he's going right. to see if he can roll uh, past the difficulty that you set up for him. Okay, great. Um, I mean, I keep rolling this combination, but it keeps being appropriate. Communicate truth. Okay. That sounds and right. I'm trying to charm these guys once again. Here we go. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh wait. Do I have a target to hit? Your target is is uh, your your communicate plus your truth. I mean, is, are they rolling an understand against me? They're gonna roll it against you. So okay, here we go. Basically, whatever. How many successes you get? That's their difficulty. Understood. Oh, I see. Okay. Understood. Here we go. Oh wait. Do I have any uh more 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 momentum? You could um, spend. There we- are. We have yeah. two momentum right now. So I'll, take, right. I'll take one to get three dice. I'll spend one yeah. more momentum. Okay. Okay. Well, that's one failure. <laughs> you can re-roll it. It's a communicate. They, I, I have advisor communicate also. I have advisor communicate uh, and understand. So Aurelius Hell comes yeah. up beside Ooh. you and is helping Bless you Aurelius. with this. Yeah. That's a success. All right. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Oh, boy. <laughs> Got to roll under a 13 two more times. I rolled a six, which is my focus. That's three successes. Oh, nice. And I rolled an 11. That's four total successes. Huge. Four total successes. Wow, that's really tough to beat. I guess I'll just have to spend all three of this threat in order to give him two oh, more dice. More dice. He's got four dice he's going to spend. He Because basically you look like a you look like the guy that's running the spaceport right now. But <laughs> well, you're talking like, ah, oh, look, they're above my pay grade. Like, he's very suspicious. So I, I shouldn't even have to spend that threat, but I will. Um, and uh, here we go. He rolls and he rolls a one and a three. Oh, no. No. Uh, and uh, the one gives him two successes. The three, three gives him a success. And uh, let me, I just want to make sure I get this right. Because if he got under his focus, I mean, under his. Um, Does he have a. He needs a specific focus. Well, he's a guard. So his guard focus is, you know, I mean, like. Guarding yeah, stuff. Is, yeah. Well, sure. Guarding stuff. But I mean, like he. He he should he should be good at this spotting yeah. lies, right? Yeah. So I'm just making this sure. This is his job. This is all this my is fault exactly for playing him as like... a salt of the earth, uh, <laughs> uh, grease monkey, go. and not the. <laughs> Always look down your nose at people. This is the lesson we've learned. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, um, this guy is an official. He's a martinet. He's a he's a professional. Yeah. This yeah. Is, so, this is this is Ferris being a snob. Right. So no, uh, looking at the stats that I chose for this guy, he doesn't have some specific focus, which nets him an additional success. So he only has got three successes to the four that you set up oh. as his difficulty, Ooh. and he is unable. And he's like, uh, uh. But "That's not all. That's not all. Because I have a talent called hidden motives. When an opponent fails an understand or communicate test against you." you may immediately create a trait which reflects the mistaken belief they have about you. Oh, that's, that's right. awesome. That's so right. So what's the nice. mistaken belief he has about you? That I'm I'm his boss. <laughs> like, out of the way, let them through. Like, uh, <laughs> let's make a path here. Let these, let these men through. Now that's more like it. That's the kind of treatment <laughs> I love. Oh boy, I'm glad I get to get these parts out of here. Otherwise it would have been Moida. <laughs> hey, I'm with you, boss. <laughs> Um, I don't know how we suddenly ended up it. in Piscataway, New Jersey in the year 1938, <laughs> but I can like tell you that at the end... figure of, this stuff out over the centuries, you know? At, at the end of this scene, the ground car slowly slides up past the security cordon again, 
uh, heavily laden. But you know, it, it, a ground car, because it works on a suspensor field uh, principle, it doesn't even like kind of sag when you put these super heavy things on it. It maintains perfect gravimetric distance from the earth and you slide sinuously out of the security cordon and out into the city of Eric yes. Keen. Awesome. And now I will yes. allow our parties to be together, our party to be totally together, or perhaps it, it seems like this has taken a while. Perhaps Corin and uh, uh, Mother Pomini have uh, have uh, investigated someplace new. Where were you headed next, ladies? Yes, we definitely had a plan and we're doing that thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I think all since, accordingly. What was your very good plan? Yeah, well, I was going to walk up and be like, wow, we heard there might be information somewhere. Wait, you got a car and you got the parts and you got the, huh? But if we get a chance to do something, we could follow up that lead. You yeah. want to follow yeah. up that Kinds lead archive. about the Kinds Archive? I think that mm -hmm. we will let just the two of you uh, do that. Um, so um, I will bring up the Kinds Archive. Uh, mm -hmm. And I can tell you that it is uh, a, sort of a, a beautiful building that um, is uh, sort of built in a very old Arrakis style. Uh, sort of uh, looks sort of very southwestern, very mud and daub kind of like a structure, but it it's quite large and and, and beautiful um, uh, in, in its in its antique construction. Um, Sounds a little like Albuquerque. It's, <laughs> yes, it's exactly like uh, a visit to Albuquerque, uh, and there are big wooden doors uh, that lead into the uh, front area, uh, and we will go ahead and place Delessa and Corin in that area, unless, forgive me if, if, you, uh, if you had some sort of plan of being sneaky or something like that, but you can uh, see that there is a librarian manning a front desk that leads uh, past her into the archive. I don't think I would be as sneaky at this time around. And as we're walking and talking, um, would like to say to Delessa, there seems to be much more descent towards House Atreides than everyone leads on. Very good. Corin. this means perhaps we can get a, a foothold. Our great house could be great once again. We could reestablish House Tyloris or even House Houdin. I just think that while taking precaution is still of utmost importance, that it might it might help us in gaining allies more than we thought. Excellent. I imagine us taking a worm to this new planet, starting our own spice trade, and putting to shame what has happened here on Arrakis. Perhaps they'll cross their own rebellion when they hear of what we've done. Totally delusional. Delessa <laughs> is like living in this dream world of what could happen if we oh, get totally. our own spice worm. And I'm feeding into it. I'm like, we will bring glory to House Tyloris once again. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and Your you eyes. Uh, oh. Whispering to each other lovingly, the uh, librarian uh, moves forward and goes, May I help you? That is a great question. Uh, <clears throat> of course. We are friends of the crown that have um, gained permission to visit the renowned archive. Uh, the archive is, is open to anybody who has a uh, who has a, a, a thirst for knowledge about the planetography of Arrakis. Um, Is this a passion of yours, I sense? A passion? Um, certainly, I am uh, a follower, a devotee of the uh, great Liet Kynes who passed so long ago. Yes, um, this space is maintained to honor the great Liet Kynes uh, and to uh, keep his knowledge, a bastion of knowledge that we may move forward here in Arrakis. I turn to the great statue that's been carved of Liap Kynes, of him straddling a dune, dying of thirst and uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, blow a kiss to it. Uh, you like the art that we have here, yes. Um, this piece was commissioned uh, when the uh, archive was opened formally. I send Delessa a hand signal Perhaps she is on our side. Perhaps she is displeased with the new regime of Maudib. 
I signal back, what makes you think that? I don't know, but it's possible. I'll never put it past anyone that they would follow me. Uh, <laughs> I ask to be guided to the entrance to this archive. Very well. Um, she walks you into the archive. Um, and inside the archive, you see that there are many, uh, many Redulian crystal uh, books. Redulian crystal are these uh, books made of, uh, you know, mic microscopically thin layers of crystal um, so that you can fit uh, an entire internet's worth of knowledge into one physical object that you can actually carry without it being, you know, extremely heavy or unwieldy. So there are many uh, Redulian crystal volumes. Um, you see an entrance to something that says private collection above it. Uh, and you see a scholar working in there and you see uh, double doors leading into an area beyond this main archive wing. Um, there is a scholar sitting uh, at a, a simple wooden table and he is using uh, one of the books. Um, you press a button and the uh, microscopically thin page turns uh, and he's quickly reading through the contents of this object. It is very quiet here um, and dust motes float in front of the windows. I'm going to um, give this uh, scene the trait silent. Uh, mm -hmm. And now that I've given it that trait, I would be careful about, well, you were using hand signals. Never mind, you were perfect. Okay. Um, I signal to Corin devotion or death as I nod <laughs> in that scholar's direction. And I want to use the voice on him. Yes. Ooh, yeah. Oh, you're going to use the voice on the scholar that's just sitting and reading. In, yeah, <laughs> the scholar that's in the private collection. Oh, you're gonna go into the private collection. Uh huh. Is this the, the one? I, that, is this the, the librarian? librarian? Peace out. The, the librarian. Yes, that's that's the librarian. Pieced out back to the front front desk. Piecing out is something uh, that you know it's a Fremen term. <laughs> um, and then uh, an old Fremen saying. Yes. An old Fremen saying, "Peace be out with you." And so, um, <laughs> Delessa, if you'd like to move through those doors to the private collection, they are not locked. But the second that you walk in, um, the scholar I, I think stands we move in and tandem. goes, "Excuse me." Oh, are you both going? Yes, I always think that like it's best if we are uh, walking with authority, like we belong there and we are mm. on business and anybody else just gets kind of like my brush off hand. Yeah, I think I, it's like a simultaneous door push and then as soon as he looks up, we're both standing imposingly beside the table. Very good. Um, excuse me, you're not allowed back here. These are private materials that are not accessible to everyone. We were let in here. Hush yourself. Put your face on the ground. Um, uh, you were using the voice. Yeah. Uh, so uh, tell me what that does for you. Oh, I would love to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> I've been trained to modulate my voice to influence the subconscious minds of others. And I can use it whenever I speak. Um, blah, 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 blah. When you use it, add one, two, or three points of threat to score the same number of automatic successes on any oh. communicate test. Um, very good. Well, I used up all my threat earlier, so I'm really happy you're doing this. How you're many points of, How many points of threat would you like to give me right now and give me that many automatic successes? By the way... Uh, how, I, how many... What was the difficulty of this test? Uh, the difficulty of the test to make a simple scholar do what you tell him to do, I'm going to say is difficulty of one. I would like to spend one threat to get one automatic success. Very good. And if I have our totals right, and forgive me if, if, if I'm struggling, I have one momentum right now and one threat, uh, because the threat that you've just given me. So um, uh, very good. Uh, you, uh, you get the one success necessary uh, w by doing that. And he immediately like uh, kneels down and puts his head against the uh, table and puts his hands down and he- uh, All the way on the he, ground and then don't move. I feel he like a, a Batman Benny Gesserit thing. <laughs> he's, he has a very <laughs> bewildered look on his face as he gets belly down on the ground. Um, <laughs> and now you're faced with, these are not Redulian <laughs> crystal volumes. They look like they are the private logs written by hand of Liet Kynes himself. Wow. Um, there's also... Um, this, this guy was just flipping through those? Uh, that's correct. <sighs> this is like Citizen Kane. He goes yeah. into Thatcher's like, library. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bingo. So, <laughs> what are you going to take or what are you going to read? Uh, as this guy has his head down like this, uh, 
Corin very much like a bully will take the book that he was reading and kind of flip through. Um, yes. <laughs> See um, what he was looking through. Um, this is biology. As she's like looking down at him and then looking back at the book. I signal, I don't want him to hear me um, if he's regaining or retains any consciousness. And I fat, oh, I, I kind of do it phonetically. I say the word all and then the word burn. And I say, fine, siege, I'll burn. Oh, you're telling him to do this. Oh, no, no, no. To Corin as she's flipping oh, through. Oh, right. Okay. And it takes me a second as I'm like mentally, phonetically putting these two together. And <laughs> You want me to burn down the archives? <laughs> the library? I mean, once I know, but then. We'll shut the book and proceed to aid in, in looking for. I think this is the book. Well, the voice the has I- made, the voice has gotten you through that difficulty of the guy uh, barring your way, but it has also sort of put a time limit on this. How long before someone notices that one of the scholars is belly down uh, underneath the table? It might be a while, but I'm gonna say that you need to find information about Siege Alburn, and that is an extended task. You require hmm. uh, four successes uh, to uh, find it. Uh, or no, I'm sorry. You have a the way I should phrase it is you have a requirement of four, um, and uh, each successful roll will give you, uh, you know, two toward the requirement. Um, so uh, how are you going to find that? There's a lot of logs here. It's not as big as the archive general, but um, there's a lot of old diaries here uh, by Liet Kynes. How are you going to find the way to Siege Alburn quickly? Well, separate from his diaries, Leah Kynes supposedly, based on the information, had a directory specifically logging all of the positions of sieges. So it should be labeled, right? So you're going to try to find it. And, uh, yes, and y- you are correct about that. And you need to try to find it. What skill are you going to use to do that? This is the, the hot action library use role that uh, I always love in <laughs> Call of Cthulhu. Oh, yeah. I know what, I I have an asset that could help. Oh yeah, what's your asset? Ooh. I feel along the underside of the tables in this restriction restricted section of the library and knowing my, the, the reaching tendrils of my sisterhood go deep and wide, I feel for the Bene Gesserit coded dots that is an asset of mine. Uh, um, and if they would have such crucial information, just like, hey, look in section 3B. Um, I love this idea, so I'm gonna let this happen, but we are playing so loose with the, with the rules in the universe. <laughs> Normally you would use coded dots to kind of leave messages for people, but if you agree to, if you agree that your coded dots, your asset, the coded dots, this is where they were in this adventure, and I mean the, the subsequent chapters that we do, then I will allow them to be used right now. I spend them forever? You, you take my them? voice? <laughs> exactly. Yes, Ariel, I take <laughs> your voice. <laughs> Thank you for getting my reference, even though there's something specifically called the voice in this game. Um, so I only get one use of dots. Can I, can I get a new because asset? You, because you've defined them so, and you can say no right now, but you're defining them so um, in such an unlikely place uh, that I would say this would be the one time you find them in this, uh, in this book of Inherit the Sand. Can can I, like, maybe use that asset slot in a different way for next sesh? Uh, no, you'd have to create a new asset and make it permanent somehow or something like that. I don't care. I like using things. It's more interesting. They're here. The <laughs> okay, docs they are, are here. here. Yeah, they are here. Um, a Bene Gesserit has been into this private restricted section. A Bene Gesserit has left under the table um, uh, carvings that um, uh, correspond to the coded dot communication system of the Bene Gesserit. And as you feel them, it tells you to pick a specific book. It's like third shelf, fifth book from the left. I reach deftly. Um, when you pull uh, I don't out. even explain to Corin what I'm doing or why. She sees me run my hand under the, under the table and then walk straight to the shelf. Okay. Yes. If this was going to require rolls uh, from either or both of us, I was also going to try something else at this moment. Well, I, I think, you know, I, I always love rolling, but I feel like our, our friend, uh, the, the Duchess, has, has sort of solved it by using an asset in a, 
and, you know, just sacrificing an asset, basically. Got so it. I think that uh, hold off because uh, there will be so many, so many opportunities for Corin to have to clean up the mess of these <laughs> ca- chaos makers. Um, so uh, you uh, are you going to go for that book, uh, Mother Pomony? I am, um, but also just we're going to have to do something about the scholar. He's seen us, even though I'm wearing my my hood. Um, yes, I reach for the book. Um, when you do, you pull it out and you realize that there's some sort of lever behind it. Ooh. I pull the lever. The uh, the uh, bookcase swings back and you are in a uh, very uh, special little cave. I mean, it's a cave. You have to kind of go down steps down into <gasps> what Alfred, is this uh, basically <laughs> uh, basically you're not sure what this is but it looks fremen it looks like some sort of fremen space back behind the bookcase that leads down into a cave beneath uh this building i just look at corin and i look down at this gentleman that is cowering below keeping his head down and as Flip I look a at coin, the hill, keep the Batman <laughs> metaphor going. <laughs> okay, but I am not an Alfred. I love Alfred, but I'm not an Alfred in this situation. I look down, look to the hilt of my knife, and I look at my hand as it makes a fist and just, uh, I just knock him unconscious. Uh, very good. Um, I'm not going to make you roll for that. Certainly, a, a sword master knows how to do such things. So you have knocked. Uh, uh, the scholar unconscious and you have this cave standing before you. And does he have like, is he wearing a coat or like a cape or a cloak or anything like that? He is wearing a cloak. He's wearing a, a sort of a desert traveler's garb, even though he's a scholar. You can tell, you know, he also has like spectacles and um, papers with him, but he he does look like a desert traveler. I want to put a leather book open up. Elbow. I want to put a, like an open book under his face, take his glasses off, roll up his uh, his cloak as a, as a pillow like he fell asleep. Very studying. good. Okay. Um, and possibly <clears throat> we'll see how, uh, how believable this is in a moment. Um, and, and so now uh, he looks like he's fast asleep at the table and the cave is open before you. I raise my eyebrows enticingly as, at Corin as I turn... And, of course, I will go first down these stairs. Um, So you're not exactly sure what this space is, but it looks like it has something to do with the Fremen religion. Um, And uh, there are carvings all over the walls that um, I'm not sure if you understand them or not. Uh, And there's also, um, you know, a small sort of water cachet in the very center it's 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 not as big as a siege uh room would be um it's a very small little private space down here would would i be able to understand anything if i were to take a closer look um you would be able to um would you like to roll something to see uh, how well you're able to understand this yes i will pr- i will use my understand role, and then uh, use my faith to guide my uh, to guide my actions. Very good, and I think that uh, in this case, uh, because uh, you have decided to do this, and you are a fremen, um, it should be a little easier for you. So it's really not uh, it's not so much about. Um, understanding uh what you're reading but it's also about finding the information you need quickly okay Okay. um and so um you need to give me an understand role with your faith um and even one success for our friend corin will uh unearth something interesting but if you have momentum you can spend it to get more information okay let's spend that momentum well, let's see how many success. Well, you have you have one momentum uh, still here. If you'd like to get an extra die on this, do you want to get an extra yeah, die on like, the roll? Yeah, sure, sure. because it. potentially, okay. yeah, if we can Great. gain more information, this would be the time to do it. Let's do it. You can um, also gain more momentum. Yes. All right. So I needed under an eleven, and I rolled a natural one. Nice. That's two successes. Mm-hmm. And an eight and a ten. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. four. so four altogether. Yes. Um, and you only needed one, so that earns you three momentum. 
So the first thing I'm going to tell you for free, just for your success, is that the writing on the wall talks about the Fremen spice orgy ritual, where the Fremen Go on. <laughs> use the Fremen in many sieges use a small, like stunted worm to create a really, uh, really um, spice that is very potent. And they engage in spice orgies where they all get prescient visions from the spice that this stunted, this small stunted worm produces. And this is the most sacred, one of the most sacred rituals of the Fremen uh, that could possibly be spoken of. Um, And uh, this sort of room is what you would call a ceremonial chamber. It's the kind of room that something like that would be carried out in. And of course, this is part of the Kynes archive. There is not a stunted worm here. Didn't you last episode say this would be the most wholesome? Don't I remember you saying that? The most what? Wholesome. Wholesome? Never mind. Orgy room. <laughs> Got it. Oh, yes. Right. Or, well, let me be clear. Spice orgy, I don't. Mi- sorry. Sorry, everybody. Um, spice orgies d- does not mean that people are fucking uh, and or <laughs> sucking. Uh, spice you orgies. said the word orgy. You need to uh, think we're going to make assumptions. A spice I mean, orgy is more like an orgy of spice consumption. Uh, okay. is, if you leave is, us to fill in blanks, it's not going to look good. <laughs> the like, books are not clear on this point, so really let your imagination run wild. Yeah, it's as wholesome think. or not wholesome as you wish. <laughs> you, I, I had no idea what, what you were uh, you know, trying to get me to say there. I, I mean, uh, in your mind, I think you thought I was like, finally, I got them to the sexy part. <laughs> Uh, no, no spice it orgy is, me from you. Yeah, Corn spice. and Duchess are alone in uh, the spice orgy room. I do walk um, up behind Corn and place my hand like right between your shoulder blades and say, "Darling, what do they say?" <laughs> this is a. Uh, was it this room in particular that, or does it speak of a room that is the ceremonial it sort of, room? It sort of speaks of the ceremonial. Uh, uh, process the ceremony of the spice orgy in general uh, and how it is not a sexual orgy uh, it, uh, it definitely <laughs> says that um, and uh, it, it talks about kind of the process of it and how it involves a stunted a smaller worm a, a fragment of shy halud is how it is uh, it is mm-hmm. worded but you uh, as a fremen know that that sort of means a stunted worm you have two extra momentum floating out here you could use it to get additional information if you wanted you could ask questions I think that's three yeah. momentum floating out there. You have three altogether, but you got two momentum, extra momentum from this ro- roll, right? No, you're right. You got three altogether. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Sorry. Let's find out some more info. And I'll just say this this speaks of a, a ceremony that I've only, I didn't think wasn't was real. But it speaks of a stunted worm. And I, and as I look closer i want to try to gain more information great ask me a question um where is this worm located right if it's for a ceremony they have to keep it nearby Hmm. i would Um, imagine so um uh this actually um if you're are you spending one momentum yes Mm -hmm. okay um it, it mentions several sieges that undergo this this ceremony. Uh, not all sieges are, are privy to this most sacred and holiest of rites, uh, and one of which is Siege Alburn. Siege Alburn, I say out loud. In the book that I'm holding, maybe in this moment I, I flip through it, does it have maps with locations and identities a- of... I'm afraid not. You think that uh, possibly if the sieges were mapped and, 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 you know, kind of cataloged that they would be out in that outer room where you knocked the guy out. <laughs> and uh, maybe not down here, which uh, solely talks about this sort of religious ceremonial sort of uh, purpose of the Fremen. We need to find this siege, Alburn. Certainly, but this information, I mean, this ritual... They gain additional prescience when it happens? Or they just really like getting high off a stunted little worm? I'm spending my point of threat, Can- and I'm giving the librarian a chance to notice that something's weird in the restricted collection. Um, okay. 
Um, I'm doing <laughs> this I... while you guys are down in a cave beneath the archive, so mm-hmm. I don't think you can do a lot to stop it. Sure. Right. Um, and this librarian rolled exceptionally well. Um, and so uh, if this were a movie, you would just see the librarian um, uh, getting uh, onto her uh, communication uh, devices uh, there in the uh, front desk. Run. I want to run to wherever I hear the sound of this communication that we do not like. <laughs> I don't think that you could really hear the sound of it. It's something that's kind of happening oh, uh, in, a, in, in a different area for you. Yeah, it's happening without your notice. I'm just kind of letting you know to add suspense. Um, so uh, then I want to. Can I walk to the water deposit and take a look at it? Um, certainly, you can. Um, it's a simple uh, sort of. Uh, kind of water container that the Fremen uh, would use uh, when they were uh, creating water stores for their community. It looks like uh, whoever Liet Kynes was, uh, he he eventually became uh, quite uh, native uh, and became part of the Fremen beliefs uh, and has created this room uh, in order to observe some of their rituals. In honoring their ritual, I'm going to taste this amalgamation of body water. You're going to drink the water. My favorite thing in a game is when a player's (laughs) like, what is that? I put it in my mouth. (laughs) (laughs) It's happened in vampire games that I've run, and now it's (laughs) happening in Dune. I don't know why players want to put stuff in their mouth. (laughs) Spit Uh, that out. I I I cut my hands and slurp. (laughs) I will set you at ease. It is simply refreshing water. Mm Mm-hmm. I want to learn more about this ritual. Yeah. Um, well, uh, I'll tell you something. You you had three momentum there. If you want to spend one more. Yes. Okay. I want to know ex- more about this ritual. What does it entail? Okay. Um, if you want to spend one more, then I'm going to say that you knew, now know how to conduct the ritual. You now know, like, you know... You, you kind of memorized or remembered, right? Because you do have some Fremen background, like kind of how to run the ritual, intone the things that begin the spice orgy, uh, how the spice is passed around, uh, how, the, how and where the worm should be kept. You know all of these things. You remember them. If we know more about this ritual, perhaps it'll aid us in guiding this worm back to the ship if we're able to do it. Yes. Um, I so, say to uh, Delessa, yes, ritual so, or no ritual, we will ride this worm. <laughs> mm, yes. Um, so um, uh, I would like to know uh, what you're doing now, uh, because um, as I have let the audience and even the players know, but not really the characters, time is of the essence. Uh, if there's nothing else of note in here, I, I'm because that book didn't have the location of Sea Chalber, and that's all I'm interested in. I go wander up the stairs, and I'm going to keep looking around for for that information. Ah, uh, very smart. Um, so, uh, like I said, it's uh, you have a time limit. You have a requirement of four. Each success you get on a roll will give you two toward that requirement. But I'm going to tell you that people are showing up pretty soon. They're showing I don't up. know that. Oh, very, very soon. Yeah, you don't know that. You don't know that at all. So let's see if uh, you're able to find this information quickly. What skill will Mother Pomony use to uh, quickly find the way to Siege Alburn uh, among these writings? I would consider that knowledge of past events. Would you not? I would. I would. Yes, I absolutely would. Um, So that will give you a bonus to the roll. You're you're saying your other memory should give you an automatic. How many successes does other memory give you? Three. Three. (laughs) Okay. Um, Well, unfortunately, finding this quickly, uh, I mean, uh, three successes, that's one roll. So now your requirement is only two. It's an extended task and you only have to roll one more time uh, and try to get the the two toward the requirement. This is how extended tasks work. I swear I'm doing this correctly, I think. <laughs> so um, so uh, you've already achieved one successful role using your other memory. 
and gotten half of your requirement, two points toward the requirement. So one more roll is necessary to find the information quickly. Uh, and in fact, your other memory has sped this up tremendously because before you have had to spend the time actually rolling. Now you've got a one automatic uh, win. You need one more win. Uh, what skill will you use? Uh, I think whew, my I'm uh, I'm looking for power. This information is power. What I want is this planet to be ours for power and for the Bene Gesserit. So um, my power statement is the Bene Gesserit will control the Imperium. Mm -hmm. And then I think that this is, uh, let's see. Um, I'm looking, uh, let's see, battle, communicate, discipline, move, understand, probably just move, even though it's not good for me. So I need a 12 um, or below and I don't have a focus. This is actually, you know, it's rec it's kind of like finding the, the, the book of maps, right? Or like whatever he wrote about, like the location of the sieges quickly. I would say that it could be understand or discipline. Okay. I Are also, either of those my better focus for you? in battle uh, is tactics. So if this is considered uh, stealing maps, covert maps against potentially enemies, uh, kind of feels like battle tactics, but also happy to do discipline. Well argued, Becca Scott, but I am not going to let you use battle to look up a book in a library. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a struggle for me. I, it's, I'm yeah. always fighting Sweet. against. Yeah. Well, so, fooled you. Now it's a 15, which is actually better for me. Discipline. Okay, um, very good. You're using your, uh, your really precise Bene Gesserit trained mind to quickly sift a lot of information quickly. Okay, discipline quickly, do we, and power. <laughs> and uh, do I have one more momentum I could use for another die? You do have one momentum left. Okay, I'm gonna spin that. So many of these rolls, I'm like, I give you guidance. Oh wait, <laughs> I can't, <laughs> wrong game. So with my other memory, uh, I stand and I close my eyes. I feel the knowledge of my sisters uh, and that gives me three successes. Under 15, one of my three die is under 15. Okay, well, luckily you only needed a success. So you needed you needed to roll, you know, each each successful roll equaled two towards the requirement. The difficulty was basically one. You got three successes on your first roll, generating two momentum actually, I guess. And then you got one success on the second roll. That's two more toward the requirement of four. You filled the requirement and you just barely managed to pull out of the wall something that's just covered in maps like you find this like uh, this volume. It looks like uh, Liet Kynes have, has self hand drawn an atlas of Arrakis uh, in all old, old yellowed oh, cool. parchment um, uh, in, in like a, a antique style book. And you can now take that uh, and uh, and make make away with it. You can get away with it or you can try to examine it now. Do you want to just run off with this book or do you want to try to um, kind of research and examine it now? I slip it into my robes and uh, I, I reach for Corin. Maybe it's a better idea if we just close the Batman door. And wait. In this split second, I, uh, I, Corin, I think we need to go or hide. What do you think? Run. Okay. Uh, I take off running through the library. Very good. Um, Corin, are you following? Uh, the Duchess? Yes, and if I'm in this moment of chaos, if there's anybody that comes up too close, I'm doing that thing where you just knock stuff over to like slow the other person down. <laughs> Very Maybe good. a bunch of bouncy balls. <laughs> yes. I'm not gonna make you roll for this, but actually uh, as you're running out, uh, a man in like a heavy kind of like um, scientist sort of uh, uh, cassock, it's like heavily like treated against chemicals and stuff, kind of like tries to bar your way. Corin, he's not a fighter. You easily shove him out of your way. Both of you run out past the uh, librarian's desk and out into the city of Arakeen. And because you were so, um, so conspicuous, I'm adding two to threat. <gasps> no. Hey, you could have just talked your way. I mean, I, I loved what you did, but you could have just talked your way in, you know, got along with them. 
but instead you did you pulled a heist just to get the information you needed and hopefully you do have that information let's set a new scene back at the opera house there's a ground car with uh big heavy uh <laughs> devices on it and there are uh there's a fremen uh fighter and a uh bene Gesserit, uh reverend mother with a big book full of maps You all are meeting and you can now discuss next steps and you can look through that book to find the location, hopefully find the location of Siege Alburn. Uh, I'm thinking that maybe friends, Aurelius. You never guess. We've done such such deeds. <laughs> well, that's uh, look what we have. Wait, what? I look and he, I, it's covered by a tarp, I think, by the way. Yeah, like, not like for nothing, but we got a bunch of spaceship parts and whatnot. Yeah, we got a bunch <laughs> of <laughs> this. Oh, sorry. You <laughs> <laughs> Hold okay. on. Has Corin ever seen that happen? Yes, we've, we've established that I've, I've back on Walla Canine, I would walk mm. around unguised. So um, perhaps That's at this right. point, I, I, I am now back in my neutral state. Um, yeah, so I might say that we've been even most effective. I've so, I found something I've always wanted to find. We found it. We found a secret room, and there's this thing Ooh. with a, a, a ceremony, a ritual, with a with a, with a stunted a stunted worm. It might be the worm that we're looking for. Stunted worm. If you could worm. find it, yeah. There was some, no. They use the word orgy. I don't know if this is the right translation. I know it's in Fremen, but I know it has mul- Fremen has multiple translations for words, and I don't know if that's the right one. But you need not protest too much to me, Corin. It is far beyond the boundaries of belief that I could be shocked by such things. We all remember Corin's face redeemed. flushes uh, in embarrassment, it, and it seems that even the Fremen are not immune to the calls of Glazia. <laughs> But are you saying that your people keep small, dare I say, transportable worms who do not grow to such a cyclopean sizes? It may be the very worm we're looking for. And what's more, I think I know where it might be. And if we're in the old dilapidated lobby of our former opera house, I run to the grand staircase and flop on it and put the book on a step in front of me, like a table, and start yes. flipping through the pages. So flipping through the pages, um, I'm not gonna make you roll for this. I think that you, you, you take some time, but you have found your prize. There are a couple sieges that Liet Kynes was not sure even definitely exist. They were fabled. And one of those is Siege Alburn, and he has the probable or rumored location of it um, 700 miles from here. Uh, it's a big planet, uh, and it, it's pretty yeah. far away. Here it is, our destination. I believe here we'll find exactly what we need to start our house anew. Aurelius, can you calculate with your fancy mind palace how we may get to hither? Yes, yes. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm amazed you actually have to find hand-drawn maps from Liet Kynes himself, the planetologist of the old emperor. And well. he's going through it and he, uh, yeah. Can I do, can I do an understand check? Yeah. And I have... I mean, as cultural studies, would that apply? Um, yeah, it absolutely would. This is okay. a cultural, even though it's an atlas, it's still part of the cultural study of the Fremen. Yeah. Okay. So I will do, and I'll do truth and understand. I don't have a focus in that. Um, yeah, I'll just, I'll roll. Uh, two successes. Two successes. Uh, great. And uh, what exactly? You're just trying to understand where the place is, or yeah, I'm just trying to find out or the I guess, best way to get there. Yeah, um, like how you, we you could look and you realize that um, it, it's not 700 miles away. That's like a crazy number that the GM threw out there. It's actually, <laughs> oh, okay. 
It's actually like all of the sieges in Dune, close enough that you could kind of get there from Arakeen. Uh, right. But it would require uh, an arduous journey over the dunes. Um, yes, a GM can correct something he said minutes ago, especially if the player rolls correctly. Um, I'm going to say that, <laughs> you know, since she already found this for you, uh, this was like a difficulty zero. So I'm going to go ahead and give you two momentum. Awesome. Um, and, but we took one away. So you only have, because it was a new, we're in a new scene. So you only have three right now. Okay. Um, and I have two threat. Um, and uh, I want to know what you what do you want to know? Because uh, the, the, these maps will tell you something else if if you'd like. I I think if they're what means the, judging by the intervening distance, and does it make sense? Should should we fix the ship first, take the ship there, or should we maybe go by foot? Or like, what what do I judge would be the best way for us to get there? Great question. Fixing the ship first is probably a good idea, but it's a okay. conspicuous way to travel, right? Yeah. People will notice a ship leaving Arakeen and then heading out across the desert. If you mm-hmm. want to keep absolute secrecy, then that would mean finding some still suits and trekking out there, and it would take you know a week. Okay. Because it's not 700 miles, something I said earlier incorrectly. <laughs> okay. But uh, don't we need a getaway vehicle <laughs> with, uh, with the This worm? is true. It's true. I mean, it's a good point. I mean, you know, uh, if you learned to, if you learned to ride the worm, you wouldn't necessarily need the getaway vehicle. The worms can travel, and you would all know this, very quickly across the sand uh, many hundreds of miles. If we um, do, we definitely all get t-shirts that say, I wrote the worm. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah, I want uh, the merch. And they sell those in the square at Eric. <laughs> 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 but um, if, you, if, if you're if you not going to learn to ride the worm, if your plan is to perhaps steal one of these stunted worms, then perhaps you should take this spaceship. And that's all I'm giving you. That's what your momentum spend got you, all that information. Okay. DeGrom. What do you think is best? Well, milady, I fear that the, as, as the GM just pointed out, that we could possibly ride the worm back here, but even then that would be of, uh, immensely conspicuous. I think perhaps right now we should focus on repairing the ship and then we will at least have our options arrayed and ready. I hate to say it, but none of us are of the fitness we once were. Riding one of these beasts, I hear, is difficult even for the Fremen. Yes, I quiet. could do it. As she, sure you could, my love. Not sure if she actually could, but she just <laughs> says that out of principle. Um, I will add. I will add this, and I, I don't think I'm. This is like a, a extra information that uh, that I'm giving you for free. Stealing a worm from that ceremonial space would be one of the greatest acts of sacrilege and blasphemy yeah, you could yeah. commit against a Fremen community. Yeah. Although oh, this community still, has betrayed all of their Fremen that went that's with true. the Duke. They're this apostates. Is true. And so who cares what they think? Treated me like garbage ever since I've left to uh Left for for a house who done so. Corin, tell up us for the task. Tell us more of what what you think. I'm, do you feel conflicted in this? I I hate to put you in an indelicate position, unless you asked me to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I can't speak for all Fremen, as I have lived apart from them for so long. I do know what my faith guides me towards. And I know that House Houdan was wronged greatly. And we will restore House Houdan to its former glory. That being said, I think potentially riding a worm back is very dangerous. I would almost rather risk being seen going out there than 
risk riding a worm back to this here to the ship. Yes, either way, we would have to fly the ship somewhere outside the city, either to go to the place with the orgy or to put it somewhere where we could ride the worm onto it without anyone seeing it. Right. Either way, we have to fly this ship out of Arakeen. Perhaps taking off at night is the best approach. Hmm. Cover of darkness. Yes, milady, clever. Although I would love to see Corin atop a worm. That would be super badass. Super don't mind badass my saying indeed. so. No one's saying we don't want to see that. Contingencies may force our hand, but it seems rather foolish to have gone to all the trouble to procure these spaceship parts only to leave it back here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, A yeah. hasty exit would be our safest bet, I would think. Delessa stands up, brushes off her robes. She's been wearing their Sibba, Sibba's hood, so she takes it off. Uh, so her power may be known. Hmm. It seems we are decided. We should fly the ship. We will take these parts you have so valiantly procured, put them in what we saw in the junkyard. If we fly the ship to the desert, there we may choose whether it is more advantageous to take this stunted worm or to find one more to our liking. And so we get our still suits and go under the cover of night. Indeed, my lady. So um, there is um, there is some preparations that must be made, and those preparations may require roles. Um, mm -hmm. Corin, you just said that you want to get still suits for everybody. Mm -hmm. Well, that's an asset. So if you want to procure the survival, uh, you know, equipment that your party needs, then you need to give me some sort of role for that. Okay. In addition, in addition, the ship has its parts, but it hasn't been repaired yet. So someone has to undergo that repair or convince someone else to do that. Um, and um, these roles could go poorly and then you guys will have to go into a situation a little less prepared with potentially a faulty ship. Um, why don't we find out how this goes? First, let's deal with, I think Corin, you would be the one to procure still suits for everybody. Mm -hmm. Is that right? And Yes, I do have my own. And I do right. too. I have, oh, I have a very still smart. suit also. Okay, very good. So we have two still suits, so we just need two more. Um, and uh, I think they would be important to go into, even though you're, but maybe you don't need them. You're going, you're going directly to the siege using a Starcraft. Uh, basically, that means it's not even an ornithopter, which is meant for in atmosphere flight. It means you're going to have to shoot up out of the orbit and then kind of come back <laughs> down on top of the siege. Um, well, I don't mean crashing into it and smashing into all the baby Fremen, but I mean that you are going to have to like, you know, launch a, a Starcraft into the air and then come down. It'll be a very quick trip, but it, you know, you're going to have to be able to do that. So I want to know, let, let's start with the, the thing that seems a little bit more straightforward. Do you go out into the market? Do you talk to other Fremen? How do you procure still suits or do you want to forego that and just, you know, get in and out of the ship and, and, and not worry about desert survival. Oh no, we, we need it. <laughs> I okay. think we need it. <laughs> so Great. Uh, so who do you talk to and then we'll make a roll to see how good you are at procuring these things. Um I would say we go into I did have a Fremen contact in a marketplace from last game that uh, would help me procure, I would imagine wouldn't be shouldn't be too hard to procure two still suits. Okay, uh, that a uh, Fremen co co contact sounds great. So just give me a roll. It's probably communicate, but maybe you'd like to use something else. That I would tells like me. Yes, I would like to use um, my duty for what okay. must be done must be done, and then probably a, a survival. Okay, very good. Mm, good. My uh, discipline survival. Okay. Um, discipline survival sounds great. So um, I'm gonna say this is just a difficulty uh, one roll to get some decent still suits. Okay, so I need under 13. And I rolled a three and a nine. Nice. Okay, great. So um, I take away one of your momentum for a new scene, but um, 
uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to going to go ahead and say that you earn uh, two more momentum. So you guys have four momentum all together, and you get perfect Fremen manufactured expert still suits. Uh, you have those now. Um, and so, and, and you have, uh, so go ahead and write those down as assets, uh, Delessa and, uh, and my friend, uh, Pharos, you've been given still suits, uh, and I'm going to make it very easy if you want to create some other survival asset later. You've, you've really kitted your, your team out. And so our final role for today's session is going to be the repair to the starship. <laughs> Who would like to undergo that role? So I can either try this myself or mm -hmm. we can enlist some aid. Probably Teresa or somebody like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would love to be uh, as confident as Corin is about being able to ride a worm. But uh, this would be a first for me. All the magazines in the world, I don't think, would have prepared me for something of this, uh, a task of this magnitude. So perhaps a... Uh, if we could get some assistance, that would be best. Um, Great. So we're, we are stealing her hulk of a junkyard ship to put these parts in. But maybe oh. maybe we talk that into the deal if we have something good enough. I have an yeah. idea. Okay. Uh, unless, Ross, do you have an idea? No, I'm setting, I'm setting a new scene in the junkyard with Teresa. All of you can be present if you want to add to the conversation. How do you convince her to make the repair roll with these new parts you've brought her. Yeah, did Ooh. you have an idea of something to offer? Why, of course. A head of house position on our new planet. That's oh. quite a, um... Yeah, um... Fantastic. Her yeah. eyes twinkle uh, slightly, uh, and she looks around at the garbage surrounding her. H human garbage and literal garbage. Uh, and uh, she kind of touches her face and feels the wrinkles there. Uh, and then she says, I'll try. Um, and she begins working on the ship. And I want to cut to the end of today's session by saying, I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll in a little bit to see how well she did. Okay. <laughs> to see if she was actually able to get the ship properly repaired. G -g 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 um, but uh, I'm not going to tell the players how she did. I'm going to let them go up in this ship without that knowledge. I'm going to end <laughs> by saying, under cover of night, huge hunks of metal fall off of a starship that begins to rise up out of the junkyard here in Arakeen, dropping panels and pieces of metal as it rises important. up over the city uh, and it rises up and the stars uh, give it a backdrop as it moves up out of orbit toward its destination, Siege Alburn. And that is where we are going to stop for today. Thank you to my magnificent cast, Becca Scott, uh, Ross Bryant, Skid Maurer, and Nora Ibrahim. We will be back with more Dune very soon. Uh, I rhyme. That's the Dune. lowest form of joke. Um, thank you for being here. We love you, Nash. See you on Arrakis again very soon. Thanks, Jared.